Good afternoon everyone, welcome inside the Motor Point Arena in Nottingham. This is the grand final of the Predictor Bet playoffs in the Elite League. It's the Cardiff Devils against the Sheffield Steelers, a rematch of the final from 12 months ago. The Cardiff Devils are looking for revenge after the Steelers won in double overtime back in 2017. They want to add the playoff title to their league championship and conference championships. The Sheffield Steelers are desperate to retain their title. Earlier on today, our man at ringside, Pete Spencer, had a chance to catch up with both coaches and get their thoughts ahead of this huge game. Paul, it's another playoff grand final against Cardiff. Quite a rivalry developing between these two sides. Yeah, I think we've been the two sides that have pretty much been going at it over the last, especially over my time and, and, and the year before that which, under Jared. So, you know, we've been the two best teams, I think, consistently over that period of four years or so. So, you know, I don't think it's any uh, real surprise that the pair of us are meeting up in the grand final again. It went to double overtime last year in the final. Are you expecting a similar sort of game again? Who knows? You, know, you don't know. I mean, uh, that was a, was a freak free game you know it was a hell of a game I mean if we can get the same result we don't care how far it goes but uh, you know we can only go as and, and plan as we go on in the game. You had some decisions to make in terms of team selection two healthy scratches what decisions have you made overnight? Uh, Mags will sit out today and uh, Yamteen will sit out again today two tough ones two bitterly disappointed men but uh, you know we made it because uh, well because we did there's, there's reasons that we you know, we put uh, 17 back in the lineup today. We feel that just with his skating ability, he can contain against speed a little bit better. And uh, yeah, you know, the players know. So uh, we have to move on and uh, we have to concentrate on the guys that are going to be out on the ice tonight. Does that mean you play another defenseman on the ice or does Zach Fitzgerald potentially play up as a, as a forward? Yeah, Zach can do both. I mean, that's a little bit of thinking in that as well. Where's this game going to be won today? Obviously, it's fine margins in these big games, isn't it? Well, goaltending's key. And, uh, you know, two very good goalies out there. You know, we've got to be disciplined and uh, stay out the penalty box. And uh, hopefully it's officiated in the manner of the type of game that it is, which is, a, you know, a playoff final. And uh, we just got to believe in ourselves. And, uh, you know, when we get that opportunity, put it away. And, uh, you know, there's going to be a, who knows? Who knows how the game's going to go, Peter? It's, it's one of them things. Two good teams, two very good teams, and uh, we've got to be at our very best to beat them today. Well, Andrew Lord, what are the thoughts ahead of another playoff final against the Sheffield Steelers? <laughs> it's an exciting time, yeah. It's uh, going to be an unbelievable game. Uh, I mean, last year's final was maybe arguably one of the best games ever in this league. Um, unfortunately, we came out on the wrong side of it, but... Uh, you know, I like where we're at right now. I like our mindset. I like the hockey we've been playing for the most part. And uh, I think we are more than ready right now to go on and uh, try to get this thing done here. It was an agonizing overtime loss last season. Does that, is that still at the back of your mind and the players' minds, a bit of revenge? It's in, it's in the back of my mind, yeah. Uh, I'm sure it is with some of our returning guys. Obviously, we have uh, six or seven new players that weren't part of that. But, uh, yeah, it's a small part or it's probably a bit bigger than a small part but uh at the same time i think you can't get too hyped up you gotta you know just keep it nice and level here the the emotions are already high enough on a weekend like this with the atmosphere the way it is uh it's it's not really like a normal week uh, in the elite league it's uh you know much more loud it's pretty crazy out there to be honest and uh we got to keep our composure and obviously you've got the chance of a treble having come away with the conference title and the league title as well but i'm guessing this is the one that you really want uh, I think the league was the real one we wanted with, you know, being played over 56 games. I think that 
improved so much. This is a very short format. Uh, I know a lot of people would like a, a little longer playoff format, but at the same time, it is, uh, it is a unique challenge. It's a different challenge, and uh, yeah, we, we've been excited about it. We're enjoying it right now. We're soaking it in, and uh, I know the guys are going to be ready for a great start tonight. It's always fine margins with games like this. Where can you see the game being won tonight? Oh, well, <laughs> probably anywhere. There's uh, thousands of little mistakes that can happen that can lead to you know the puck in the back of your neck. But uh, obviously goaltending's huge, special teams huge. Uh, I would imagine there's not going to be all that many power plays or PKs, but uh, you know so that leads into five on five play. I think uh, you know we all know about Sheffield's speed, their transition game. We're going to need to try to minimize that as best we can, and uh, we're going to need to just play the way we can. And if we do that, we'll be in very good shape. Thoughts there of Paul Thompson and Andrew Lord. A lot of nerves on playoff final day. Alongside me, Pete Russell. You've been coaching in playoff finals before. You know what it's like. What is it like just 10, 15 minutes before the teams are due out to contest this match? I think everybody's just getting ready. You, know, you can imagine how excited they are. And I think they just want to get going. And I think it's just coaches making sure the last few little things are nailed and everybody's on the same page. And, and it's about just being ready as soon as that puck goes so you can get going. And I'm, I'm sure they just can't wait to get out there. I think you'll see the guys early in the corridor. And, you know, it's going to be a great game. The fans are taking their seats. It is sold out here at the Motor Point Arena. The fans have been enjoying a dance-off with the mascots. The Zamboni is just making the final preparations of the ice surface. Face-off is not far away. And this was the final matchup last season. No team has won more playoff championships than the Sheffield Steelers. They're tied with 10 with the Murrayfield Edinburgh franchise. Cardiff haven't won this title since 1999 and for all the success they've had over the last few years this is one that they really want to get their hands on and they have been the model franchise in the elite league over the last few years the Cardiff Devils where do the strengths lie in Andrew Lord's team he's built a massive core and he's kept it and any changes that made round the core your Joey Martins, Hartman, Bounds, Richardson you can go through them all He's added quality every time you bring someone in, and you know. Then you, I just think that they're all on the same page. They're very, uh, they play a real cool brand of hockey. It's aggressive, and everything's pretty quick. They're strong down low in the zone, but they know what each other are. That's the big thing because they've been together for so long. Sheffield, Sheffield with a lot of speed. And, you know, yesterday that came to at the end. It was showing in three and three. They looked really dangerous, and the ice opened up. And, I think this is going to make us a great game. And I don't know how they've matched up all year. You've got to tell me that, but I, I think it could be a great game. The two really good teams, great goaltending, they've all got mobile D, and they've got dangerous balls. Both netminders do have a shutout against the opposition. Evans Mustakov won a 4 0 decision against Cardiff. Ben Bounds, a 3 0 shutout in Sheffield not long ago. These two teams met in the Challenge Cup semi-final stage and they were two one-sided games Sheffield won the home leg 6-2 Cardiff won their home leg 7-1 and made it to the Challenge Cup final but there have been lots of tight games the first meeting this season was decided in overtime any result really is possible here today but throughout the history of the Elite League playoff final weekend the finals have almost always been tight. It's never been won by more than two goals. And last year, it took 96 minutes to get a winner. Long beyond the regulation 60, there were two periods of overtime. And then Levi Nelson scored the winner beyond Ben Bounds. That'll be fresh in the memory of so many of the Cardiff players. They've retained a lot of their roster from last season. And once again, the Cardiff Devils have dominated the Elite League Awards. Announced earlier today, Ben Bounds is the league's netminder of the year. Andrew Hotham from the Devils, defenseman of the year. And Joey Martin of the Devils, forward of the year. All three of them have made the Elite League first line of all-stars. For the Sheffield Steelers, netminder Irvins Mustakovs and defenseman Mark Matheson named on the second all-star team. You're seeing the best of the best here today in this predictor bet. Elite League playoff final.
But there's team news to bring you. Both coaches have had decisions to make. Our man at rink level today is Pete Spencer. Pete, the coaches have had some calls to make, particularly Paul Thompson. He has too many imports. He can't dress them all. What decision has he made? Well, Jonathan, he's opted to leave out of the lineup Swedish centre Andreas Jamtin and Canadian forward Matt Marquardt. So defenseman Mika Francilla returns to the lineup after missing out in yesterday's semi final. It also means that defenseman Zach Fitzgerald will play as a forward. So head coach Paul Thompson will rotate four pairs of wingers around three centres. Those pairs will be Robert Dowd and Levi Nelson, Matthew Waugh and Tim Wallace, Eric Neely and Colton Fretter. Jonathan Phillips and as I mentioned Zach Fitzgerald those three centers that will be rotating amongst those pairs of wingers are Andreas Valdix, John Armstrong and Jonas Westling. Irvin Smistakov in the Steelers net. Cardiff are much as they were yesterday in fact exactly as they were yesterday against the five flyers so they're without Luke Piggott, Craig Moore and Drew Paris and that means the line combinations for the forwards are Patrick Aslin, Joey Martin, Matt Pope the second line of Justin Farina, Jake Morissette and Lane Ulmer. And then a, a, four, a, a, thir, a fourth line rather of Matt Myers, Josh Batts and Tom Rudkins. Between the pipes of course, South Yorkshire goalie Ben Bounds as the atmosphere builds here down at rink level. And looking through that Cardiff lineup, Pete Russell, the third line, any time you've got a player with the talent of Joey Haddad on your third unit really shows the depth that Andrew Lord has available to him. 100%, the, the deep all the way through, and then even after that, when they put a batch and miles out with someone, it's just, it just gives them so much to push off, and you know, Sheffield have to use their bench tonight, and I'm sure they will. We said it last night, the same thing. Hey, Sheffield are not too soft either. They've got some serious talent as well on their team, and you know, for me, I think the game is important that how well you play defense against these teams because when you're not tight in the defense and you don't play strong in the corners, you end up in big, big trouble against these two teams. Might that be a reason that Paul Thompson and Jerry Anderson have chosen to go and bring back in Mika Francilla in place of Matt Marquardt because then they've got the option of moving Zach Fitzgerald back to defense, a seventh recognized defenseman if needed, if they're being worked hard by these Devils forwards. Yeah, for sure, the officer trust them defensively and he's obviously mobile and I think they want to add that to the back and they want to try something a little bit different tonight and uh, they have to be good in their own end and they know that you've talked about the games going either way and some big scores this season defense will win this game because both teams have got good offense there will be goals but it's who minimizes the mistakes and who makes great decisions and who's disciplined to the system the Sheffield Steelers conceded the fewest goals of any team in the elite league during league play they also had the most team shutouts and the best penalty kills. But it's all on this game. And Cardiff come into it in good defensive form following that shutout victory. And Ben Bounds, when he was called upon yesterday, particularly in the first period against the Five Flyers, was absolutely outstanding. Their depth and the talent up and down the roster won them the game in the second half against the Flyers. But picking a winner today, particularly asking all the neutral fans inside this ring, they can't call it. The bookmakers make the Devils favourites. They are odds on, 9-4 to four to win this. The Steelers at 13-8. to eight. But the Steelers have the history of winning playoff finals in this building. They have 10 playoff titles all time. Cardiff are seeking their first. They've lost four straight finals. They won four in the 90s. But they've lost their last four appearances in this showpiece occasion. The last couple of Devils making their way onto the ice. The Steelers have been out for a couple of minutes now. The Steelers will be in their road white shirts this afternoon. They are the third ranked team Following their third place Elite League finish, the Devils ranked number one following their league championships. They're in their home reds. They will be on the home bench and they will have the last goal on those all important line changes. How will these two sides match up? Who will the coaches want out against the other team's star players? 
Last year it was a highly charged emotional occasion. We're expecting something very, very similar today. Building is packed out with fans of all 12 Elite League teams. Ceremonial face-off between the two captains. It'll be either Jonathan Phillips or Jake Morissette who lifts the Predictabet playoff trophy in about two and a half hours' time. But now we are going to take a short pause because it is time for the singing of the two national anthems performed by Anna Cooper. season of elite league hockey ends here tonight with the reigning league champions against the reigning playoff champions the Cardiff Devils and Sheffield Steelers are set to do battle again in the predictor bet grand final last year Sheffield won a pulsating game in double overtime will the Steelers triumph again and claim their 11th playoff crown the most ever by any team in the UK or will the Devils add the playoffs to the league and conference titles and in doing so, end 19 years of playoff heartbreak. It's amazing to think it's been 19 years since a club like Cardiff, you know, won the playoffs. And this may be their year. You know, we keep talking about them being champions. The Sheffield seem to find a way to bounce back in the playoffs. They have a little special thing there. This is going to be a great game, I think. Really looking forward to it. Spine tingling rendition of the two anthems. The atmosphere here in the Motor Point Arena in Nottingham. Absolutely bouncing. All 12 teams around the Elite League are represented. They have sold out this building. And now we wait for the opening face-off. The referees in charge of this game, Tom Darnell and Mike Hicks. The linesman, Danny Beresford and James Kavanagh. We do have goal line technology available to us today and we had to use it in the semi-final to determine one of those Sheffield goals and if there's another goal line decision to be made the officials can take a look but here we go then the predictor bet grand final to decide the playoff champions of the 2017-18 season game 397 across the elite league this year is underway and the devil straight onto the attack with pope pushed towards mustakovs and he makes the first stop we spoke yesterday about how the steelers have often conceded early goals it wasn't the first shift yesterday but it was the second when mokshansev beat mustakovs the steelers won't want 
an opening minute like that one was. And here's Andrew Hotham once again, defenseman of the year in the Elite League's first all-star team. The Devils choose not to gain the zone, and the first hit is landed by Wallace, knocking Asselin down. Both teams making changes, the pace just slows. Pass down the boards, taken into the zone. Crowder moving it across. Here is Haddad. Shot is tipped, Mustakos will save. The redirect came in from Crowder. And it'll be a face-off in the offensive zone for Cardiff. Yeah, it's been a good start. No Cardiff are controlled as usual. And Sheffield are sitting in a 1-2-2 and they're trying to contain the rush. And, you know, done a good job there as long as they don't give odd man rushes away and they're strong round the net. You know, they can go and play the other way off the transition. Haddad moves the puck back for Strachan. That one hits the linesman on the way to the corner. Steelers are first to get a stick to it. Dowd is trying to help it down the boards. Can't manage it, and Haddad will get it behind the goal. Tries to play the pass out. It does reach Bentavolio, but he can only knock it to the far corner. Devils still retaining possession. Still with Haddad. Valdix keeps a watch over him. The shot from Crowder is charged down into the legs of the giant figure at the back for the Steelers, Eunice Runberg. A lot of zone time in the early stages for the Devils. Puck play behind the goal, Rundberg to Matheson. That's been a defensive partnership that Paul Thompson has relied on so often this season. Eunice Rundberg has had a couple of trips back home to Finland. He rejoined the team full-time in the second half of the season. And he went straight back onto a pairing with Matheson. Steelers into the offensive zone for the first time. Dowd trying to get his stick to it. And Francilla restored to the lineup. He missed yesterday's semi final. But Paul Thompson putting him back on the roster for this grand final. Fretter knocks the puck down as the Devils were threatening to break away. And then a nice touch between the legs takes him beyond Farina. And the first shot on bounds brings about a blocker save. Sheffield are going to have to be moving around and getting good support in the offensive zone. Cardiff's got big size difference against their forwards and they can't get caught in little battles. They're going to have to make sure they're smart and make chances and move the puck low to high. Defensive work from Ulmer stops Armstrong, who was trying to be tricky again. He scored a wonder goal in the Steelers' playoff quarter-final victory against Guildford. And then he scored the overtime winner against Nottingham yesterday. Now Morissette to Farina, and he's got Myers in support. Trying to shoot on Mustakovs, misses short side. Myers in the corner. He was a real pest yesterday against the Flyers. Back with Richardson. Sent towards goal. Bounces off Mustakovs, played back into the pads, and he'll cover up, and again Myers gets in and gets involved, and the Steelers don't like that. We saw yesterday Nottingham take a lot of shots at Mustakovs from odd angles, trying to get rebounds. And as we see the replay, looks as though Richardson was again looking for something similar. They're going to be direct. It's a huge game, and you have to be direct. You've got to try and drive pucks deep, either to the net or take the puck low into the zone so you can get them to turn and you open the zone up and you can create more offense. Myers wins the draw, but the puck goes across to the far side and the chase is on. Richardson, nice pass down to Batch. Mustakovs will leave his crease and paddle it to the corner. Puck caught up in the skates of the referee momentarily. And the Steelers regain possession behind their own net. And they've got to pass their way out of trouble. O'Connor, long touch forward. And it'll go off Jonathan Phillips, a stick and Bounds will have to cover the Steelers' captain. Chasing down on Ben Bounds, and that'll get the Steelers a face-off in the offensive zone. Ben Bounds shut out yesterday, his seventh on the season. Once again, netminder of the year. Now a two-time Elite League champion. Richardson. Takes the aerial route out of the zone and it gets all the way through to Asselin, who gets the shot on Mustakovs, who touches it beyond the post. Steelers with a clearance down the ice. This will cost them icing 
as Hotham chases back and the puck has just enough momentum to cross that red line and the Steelers will have to go all the way back. I think Sheffield will take those one-on-one -on -one situations all night if they can have them. I don't think that's as dangerous if they get closer and they start creating two-and-ones and getting good shots off passes or support onto the puck. Mustakos a great goalie. He's going to make those saves from there all night. Westerling against Pope from the draw. Devils win it. Here's Bryce Reddick. Joey Martin. Looking for a shooting lane. He gets one and Mustakov saves. Came off the left shoulder. And the Steelers back into possession with Jonas Westerling. Wah nudges it on. It's just beyond Matheson. Defenseman, but he loves to step forward and get involved in the offensive play. We saw that a lot, particularly late in the game when the Steelers were pressing hard against the Nottingham Panthers. Steelers rely on their defensemen, particularly O'Connor and Matheson, for a lot of offense. Here's Levi Nelson, plays it into the crease. Bounds was down with the blocker, and Nelson takes a heavy tumble. Back with Dowd. Armstrong nudges the puck free. The Devils don't get it clear. Francilla. Shot is hit into the traffic in front of Bounds. And the Devils are first onto that loose puck and they'll skate it away through Haddad. Crosses the blue line under real pressure. And still he's got the puck on his stick. Did that come out of the zone? Yes, it did. The Devils didn't realise and went chasing. But the offside whistle goes. There's a little chance there on the turnover and they just couldn't get the puck flat to make a play, but... It's a good speed to this game. Another chance to have a look at that shot from Martin that got through. Mustakovs made the block. There was. There were bodies in the way. And Jonathan, we saw yesterday how important face-offs were for the Sheffield Steelers against the Nottingham Panthers in that semi-final. Tim Wallace and Jonas Westling both missing out on their face-off opportunities. Steelers have got to do a better job of winning that face-off situation. They won the latest restart, and that's what's given them possession here. O'Connor, Steelers' leading point scorer from defence. So they lie on him and Matheson to provide extra goals and assists from the back. David Phillips in hard in the corner. Farina, he was a scorer in the semi-final. It's interesting, Sheffield look as if they're going to play man and man low in the zone, and... I think if they're good one-on-one -on -one low in the zone, like Tom will set them up here, that it might work low in the zone against this team because, you know, we talked about yesterday about them finding low zone and going low to high or to the slot. It's going to take those situations away, but you can't lose your assignment. It's so vital. Play stopped for a puck that went into the Sheffield Steelers bench. It'll be a neutralised restart. Just over six scoreless minutes to start this Predictor Bet Grand Final. Matheson bounces it forward. Phillips gets a touch. And Reddick is back to it first. Fitzgerald came in, then pulled out of the hit. Probably wisely, he was puck was long gone. And then Haddad skates straight into Fitzgerald, and that's got Westerling moving. Didn't think he was going to be able to get around Strachan, so he came back into neutral ice. He's played a lot as a forward this season, particularly in the second half of the season, Zach Fitzgerald, since he's returned from his injury. Here's Josh Batch, a player who's also made the move from defence to forward this season. Reddick sends it towards goal, it bounces off a skate, and... Mustakos was not called upon. Matheson into the zone. Reddick trying to hold him off. Both officials watch on and decide that that's OK. The Steelers with a partial intercept. And then they try and poke it back towards Arson. And he's got enough on it to get it across to Armstrong. Martin pressing hard and the Devils forecheck has forced the Steelers all the way back. And then the Devils turn it over. Great play by the forwards, and it might produce a chance for Martin. And his shot is blocked by Arson. It came off the body. Relentless work from this Devils forward line. 
and they're going to win this one off the wall as well. Asselin plays it out, and the Steelers get a stick to it and the calmly play it away. You know, we talked about it already, but Sheffield are doing a good job down low. And they're, they're, they're starving the cycle, they're starving the back of the net, and that, that hurts Kaza's offense. It really does. Francilla now furthest forward for the Steelers. Mid season pickup for Paul Thompson. It looks like the officials are really letting things go. They've let a few little things go that normally they call in a league game, and that's good. Puck just gets out of the offensive zone, a frustration for the Steelers, but they have it with Armstrong. He can't find a pass that counts. Steelers are making changes behind the play. Freshly off the bench is Nelson. He can't get onto the touch from Dowd. O'Connor goes back as Haddad closes. And that's straight to Crowder. Steelers play it off the glass, but again, it doesn't get across the blue line. Hotham thought about blasting it towards goal. Instead, more gently around the boards. David Phillips is to it first, but the Devils will get onto it. Hotham can be so dangerous. He's shot into a crowd, and no one could get a stick to it in red. It was sitting at the top of the crease, but it was the Steelers who got onto it first, and then Haddad is whistled offside. Done a good job round the net there again. It collapsed in, into the house and they're first to rebounds and they're going to have to be with that all night because if they're taking the low zone away, Cardiff are going to start coming high and they're going to get pucks to the net. And they've got strong players down there. They have good size. I think a goal might settle this game down a little bit. I hope one comes and I think the game might really lighten up. Cardiff led 3-1 at the end of the first period last season. Runberg, the Steelers keep it in the zone. Fretter sends it towards Bounds, the save is made, and Neely went hunting after something. And any time a Steeler goes near an opposition netminder, particularly in a playoff game, it always draws a scene and a reaction. Bryce Reddick being held down on the ice at the moment, and it's Eric Neely for the Steelers that's on top of him. Nearly crashed in after Fretter sent the puck towards Ben Bounds' uh, five hole. Just looking for that tip, that rebound to see if he could direct it home and break the deadlock. And Reddick took exception to that. As you said, Jonathan, any time a Sheffield Steelers player goes near an opposition netminder during a playoff game, it's always going to elicit that kind of response. Faceoff will stay in the offensive zone. Still sitting on the face-off dot, it was Neely who got his stick to it and sent a shot towards goal, although it went wide. Rönberg switches it across to the far side. Now back near, going to bounce one off the boards. They are lively here at the Motor Point Arena. Matheson. Neely, Reddick right on top of him. Matheson again, Steelers making a change behind the play, that's why... Arson wasn't quite up on the blue line where I think the Steelers may have expected him to be. He was just completing a change. Armstrong from the angle, bounds with the save. Armstrong trying to reach this one and does. Fretter spins away from a couple. Twisting a Devils player down to the ice, it's still with Colton Fretter. Might need a little bit of support as Richardson and Asselin gang up on him. Reddick's there as well, Armstrong. And it's the Devils who win out and move it on to Farina. Sent around the balls, it'll slide all the way to the far side. Skips past Martin. And the Steelers get a helpful rebound off the linesman. Devils back forward, a little two-on-two two developing here. Asselin shoots, and Mustakov gloves it above his head. Excellent shift there from Colton Fretter, working really well when he lost the puck, winning it back on the forecheck, and a couple of opportunities on Ben Bounds, and that's what the Sheffield Steelers have maybe been lacking in the opening ten minutes of this first period. Chances on net, opportunities, and just creating a little bit of pressure. Irvin Mustakov turned 34 yesterday. At the end of the game, he was awarded the Yorkshire flat cap, which the Steelers dish out to a player at the end of every victory. Hotham trying to create some space. The Devils have drawn a penalty. They're going to get the first power play of this game, and it's all the work of Andrew Hotham. 
so direct, such good hands. The they Steelers love felt they had to get a stick involved. We, we talked again yesterday about the D being involved off draws and Cardiff either down the wall. You know, there's some little plays in there, he drives in with the puck and it's, it's hard to defend because he's coming down from the top, fast at people. We got a first big PP chance here. And well, it's strength against strength. The Devils power play was the league's best. The Steelers penalty kill was the league's best. Two minutes of five on four man advantage coming the way of the Cardiff Devils. The Steelers get the puck out of the zone. Following the face off, we'll get the official call on the penalty from Pete Spencer in a couple of moments' time. It's two minutes for tripping on Andreas, Nelson, um, Andreas Valdix, rather, uh, caught at 10.46. Here's Pope. Moves it across to Martin. So many threats on this Devils power play. It's why they're so strong. Most power play goals, best power play percentage. Can they break the deadlock here in the Predictor Bet Grand Final? Wallace knocked down, straight back to his skates. Devils still with possession. Martin sends it on goal. Mustakov saves. The puck is loose. O'Connor is first to it. And he sends it down the ice, and the Steelers have killed the first minute. It's a good save. He gets it through, and you know, he can't see that. He's screened, and he's just in good possession. He's down, and he's strong and square, and he's good at that, Mustakov. Passes out of the reach. Over on the far side of Bentavolio. And the Devils whistle for icing on their own power play. 53 seconds left on the man advantage as we see that Mustakov save again. Sheffield are so tight in the PK in the zone and you watch the sticks, they're taking lanes away everywhere, they're taking shooting lanes away and they make you take shots that you don't want to take because you can't get a really good chance. You've got to move it quick and get them moving. Devils across the line over on the far side. Hotham turns away from goal. Changing passes with Myers. And then he tried to find Haddad and Fitzgerald was waiting for it. 30 seconds left on the power play. Devils across the line once more. Switch from Haddad to Hotham. That one again sees Fitzgerald in the way, operating as a forward on the penalty kill. Hotham again looking for room. Again, this one's blocked by a stealer. This time it's Phillips. Final five seconds. Valdix is ready to return. Fed towards the back post, and it was a touch off the pad of Mustakovs. And the Steelers kill the penalty. Fantastic penalty kill. You can see there's no options. So they're just going to have to be direct. They're going to have to get pucks through and get them to the net and make second transies. And as Andreas Valdix heads to the bench, just rather favouring one leg. So we'll just keep an eye on that. It looked like the right leg. So we'll just keep an eye on that for Andreas Valdix. Match with the shot, big rebound, it's bobbling around and Mustakov's got back and O'Connor helped him out. Huh. And look what at a that play little turn from O'Connor. And look at that pass out for Neely. Oh, and Armstrong just got tied up as he was trying to get on the centering feed. Uh, I can't believe he never called the slash on the stick. It's a goal scoring chance. I think that was a penalty. Here's Batch. There's a one-timer from Strachan and the save is made. Mustakovs has been busy in this game. Yep, they're getting a lot of pucks to the net, but so far he's handling it. Again, Armstrong has lost his stick. He feels it's been knocked out of his hand, but David Phillips with the defensive intervention, and he sends the puck around the boards. A few Devils players saying that that might have touched someone on the Steelers' bench, but the officials are happy to carry on. Pope's got to avoid that loose stick. David Phillips blocked that one on one knee. It looked like a painful one. He winced as he got back to his skates. Nelson sends it down the ice, but this one's going to be icing against the Steelers. I think Cardiff are playing a really controlled game, Jonathan, but you know what? Sheffield are playing really well on their own end, and I talked about it at the start. They have to play that way because they're going to get their chances, but they have to play tight, they have to be smart, they have to make sure they don't get outnumbered around the net, and they're doing a great job. And Sheffield's doing an amazing job in the corners and taking away the back of the net. That was the replay of the non-call which a lot of the Steelers fans thought should have been on Armstrong as he made his way towards the net 
Here's Mark Lewis. Trying to get it towards Morissette. Westerling inside for Nelson. Fournier watches on, moves it to Dowd. Nice hands around Lewis. Still with Robert Dowd. Backhand on goal and Bounds was down with the stick save. Francilla. Leaves it for Dowd. Martin sticks with him. Dowd checks for options. He plays it straight towards Morissette, who in turn finds Pope. And the Devils are across the line, but Dowd back checks hard and gets his body in the way to separate man from puck. Again, the Devils forwards are in hot. And this time it's Myers. Asselin. Puck bobbling around front. Oh, the backhand attempt that came in from Morissette and it went to the corner. Dowd showed great strength on the puck in the corner because Matt Myers is a bull. Asselin tries to send it towards goal. It flicks up and it's grabbed out of the air by Fitzgerald and he leads the charge. Fitzgerald tried to send it towards goal. It came off Richardson and went behind the net. Matheson sends it back there. Phillips coming in and trying to put the pressure on Myers. He goes down and the puck is trapped underneath him. And that one isn't coming free anytime soon. That was an excellent stick from Mark Richardson just as Zach Fitzgerald was coming forward, looking to get that shot away. Crucial intervention in, at a crucial time from such a, a seasoned professional. Andrew Lord in his fifth season with the Cardiff Devils, four of them as player coach. Already league and Earhart Conference champions this season, the Cardiff Devils looking to complete a treble. And we're still waiting for the first goal of this Predict About Grand Final. Haddad brings the Devils out, gains the red line. Something for Crowder to go after. Runberg with the big reach. Still with the Devils. Sent through the slot, but no meaningful touch on either side. And that one did come out of the zone before it hit Reddick and bounced back across. It's very cagey. No team wants to lose the first goal, it looks like. And it's a final, but I just hope there's a goal soon so the game has to open up a little bit. And I think this game will really, really come to life. I said it earlier, and, but it's going to take something either special or a secondary effort right now or a mistake, I think. Crowder off the glove of Watt. Crowder's going to go after it, just loses his balance. Fretter. Oh, nice touch beyond, and that might get the Steelers on a rush. Wesseling goes to the net. Fretter sent it off bounds as pads looking for that rebound, but bounds directed it well away from traffic. O'Connor senses the opportunity to step forward. Can't play a return pass out. Here comes Bentavolio. Farina winds and fires, and Mustakovs pins it to his chest. And we're inside three minutes remaining in this first period. They're finding it very hard to get inside. You can see it, Jonathan, and you know. Great play by Colton Fretter, a minute ago, he chipped the puck off the wall for himself to create the rush, and maybe Sheffield have to start sending someone maybe off the far dot and the rushes, because Bouncy's kicking a lot of rebounds out through those darts. If they're going to make those plays, they've got to have somebody coming from there. Here's Lewis, sends it across, oh, and the touch that could have made the difference didn't come. Might do here, oh, just wide. Farina, inches away. Back in towards the traffic and past everybody and out the other side. Neely gets to it and Farina's right on top of him. Morissette there too. Neely has been a really good pickup for the Steelers mid-season. Already scored 12 goals since joining from Adirondack in the East Coast League in North America.
Arson inside. Here goes Armstrong. He can be dangerous. His shot is way off target. Final two minutes of what has been a scoreless first period so far. Can the Devils change that? Chases on to the near side boards. The Steelers will help it on its way out of the zone. And that one comes up high. It's kicked forward by Fournier. His shot is straight into the block of Matheson. He's going to try and get away from Martin. Martin's persistent. Here goes Armstrong. Trying to stick handle his way through. It might come back to Robert Dowd. He's under pressure from Asselin. Dowd wins it back from Myers and Nelson takes over. Tried to get it out front for Dowd. It was blocked by Myers. He takes the hit for his trouble. It's a couple of times when John Armstrong's been upended, going hard to the crease. Puck gets by Nelson. It may come around to Matheson. He needs to show strength against Pope. O'Connor hits that one. It takes a deflection and goes high. Westerling. And a real tussle going on between Matt Myers and I think it's Robert Dowd out in front. O'Connor's shot was blocked by Pope and he might sprint down the ice. The Steelers are trying to hustle back. Westerling did a good job, but here comes the trailing play. Oh, and that one is blocked away off Matheson's legs as Bentavolio tried to test Mustakovs. We'll have live reaction for you at the end of the first period from the Sheffield Steelers bench. Puck stuck in the corner, who's going to emerge with it? It'll be Haddad. Trying to bring it out front, the Steelers prevent him from doing that. And the deflection takes the puck into neutral ice. It's the Steelers fans making the noise as the period comes to an end. Is there time for Bentavoglio? He gets the shot on, Mustakov saves it, and the Steelers clear it as the clock hits zero. And a scoreless first period to start the predictor bet. Playoff final in 2018. Both sides have had their chances. The Devils may be getting more pucks on goal than the Steelers. But there's still a real tension in the game, Pete Russell. Yeah. Listen, the game's kind of went how we said it would at the start. I think Sheffield have been really good in their own end. As have Cardiff. They're two very good teams. They have good decals. They're both well coached. And it's going to take something a little bit different here, or a rebound, or something special, or maybe just an error to get something going, you know. The power play Cardiff had, they never really get any looks at all, you know. And if Sheffield's PK is that good tonight, they're going to have to just get pucks to the net, and they're going to have bodies to the net, but great first period of the final. So the players have made their way off the ice, which means that we are going to now be able to throw it down to rink level. And Pete Spencer, who I believe uh, has got Ben O'Connor with him. Ben, an end-to-end -end first period, talk me through it. Yeah, I think I think both teams are pretty cautious. You didn't want to try too much. You know, that, that first goal is huge. And uh, I think both teams played well. We had uh, we had some time in the offensive zone. We had some time in our defensive zone. Uh, like I said, I think uh, both teams were playing a bit cautious that first period and feeling each other out. Does it feel a bit cagey out there? No one wants to make the first mistake. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's a big crowd. It's a it's a big event, you don't want to be that guy making that first mistake. The ice is a bit bad, uh, jumping all over the place, so you gotta, you got to take that extra second, so it's a, it's a little slow. A couple of opportunities for Colton Fretter and John Armstrong towards the end, but the officials uh, seem to be happy to kind of let this uh, game flow at the moment. Yeah, yeah, they're fine. Uh, you know, they've uh, called one call that they thought that they had to call, and you know what, this, you know, with a game like this, you don't want to call too many penalties. You just want to let the game go. How's the ice playing out there? Because I know there were some concerns after the semi-final yesterday. There's been a lot of hockey this weekend and it's, uh, it's not in great shape. Uh, but it's the same for both teams and we've got to move on. Ben, I'll let you get back into the uh, locker room and get your instructions. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you. We'll try and get some reaction for you before the start of the second period from a Devils perspective. Now let's take a look back on the best of the action that we've seen here in the first period. So Jonathan Fernley and Pete Russell up here on the gantry. And Pete, the Devils came out probably the little hotter of the two teams and spent more time in the offensive zone. But the Steelers didn't concede the early goal that put them on the back foot like yesterday. 
hundred percent. And you know, things I talked about. Ben O'Connor's just repeated in his interview, and both sides are cagey. They're being its defense first mindset, which it has to be. And I think in the ozone, you know, it's going to have to be direct, or it's going to have to be some rebounds. We keep going on about it. When teams are that good defensively, the unit, you need things like that. Oh a piece of brilliance and each team here has some guys that can bring some brilliance but I think it's been a great period so as we continue to look back at the best of the first period action let's turn our attention towards Great Britain Pete you're the coach of the men's national team world championships coming up in Hungary you've got some games uh, next weekend I believe um, oh, first of all how much are you looking forward to it yeah can't wait it's a great time of year and Anything to do with your national team in your country is just absolutely fantastic. We go to camp this week and we'll start and guys give the guys a couple of a bit of rest and make it easy the first few days and then try and up it a little bit and then we get the Lithuania games and then we got to make the decisions. We got to go the next week with who's coming away with us and there's some big decisions to make. But um, we got a great group of 28 guys ready and you know Andy Buxton's done his job and he's set it all up and now it's, uh, it's time to get going. I can't wait. Several players who are in your provisional squad have been taking part in finals weekend it's a uh, last chance to impress the coach yeah but these guys have played this weekend and I talked about it yesterday I thought the Brits done a really good job and and it's great to see this is a really high standard of hockey so we got a good team we're going to go and play at a second top level in the world championships and you know it's it's probably just as easy to finish in the top three as it is to go down this year that's 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 the margin of uh, of errors but we, we're, we're feeling pretty good about ourselves I think we can go there and do really well it is a step up following promotion last year. You won uh, the gold medal and promotion last year in Belfast. On the road to Hungary this time, who do you think GB's biggest rivals are going to be? What are the teams you're going to have to look out for? You know, I, th I think, you know, how good Slovenia are. They were good in uh, the Olympics there. And then, you know, you've got Kazakhstan. I don't need to say any more about Kazakhstan. GB have played them before. They're a quality nation. They have great skill. Then, you know, and then you've got the three teams closest to us is Italy, in Poland and Hungary and there's no easy games there you know they're all big games they've all got great players and uh, but you know what we've got some great people on our team and they're up for the challenge and they're looking forward to it and the biggest thing is they believe in themselves. Jamie talk me through what seemed to be a, a fairly cagey affair from both sides in the first period. Uh, yeah well I actually thought we started way better than we did yesterday uh, I mean we talked about our start against Fife in the semi there yesterday uh, I think they got us on the back foot, so uh, I mean from our point of view we were way happier with the start, first couple of shifts were good, but uh, yeah it's two good teams really going at it. Plenty of offensive zone time for you as well and uh, the better of the chances? Yeah I think so, yeah I think uh, you know we got into our rhythm, we got into our game, uh, some good cycles down low, we really put some pressure on them, obviously drew that first penalty, but uh, yeah I mean we we're pleased with our start and you know, hopefully more of the same here. Obviously the officials seem to be happy to kind of let the, the game flow. Um, obviously, you had that opportunity on the power play, but couldn't quite capitalise. Yeah, I think when you come to the playoffs, you know the whistle's going to get put away a little bit more. Uh, we saw that yesterday, so you got to battle through a little bit more. Some stuff that you know during the regular season you might uh, you might get some penalties for, but uh, yeah, you know we got to battle through. But uh, I think if we keep playing the right way. Hopefully, you know we'll see a few more uh, penalty situations there. How important is this first goal going to be for both teams? Yeah, I think it's sort of, first goal is huge, but in, you know in a. A game like this today, where you know it's going to be a tight, low-scoring game, you know the first goal is going to be uh, it's going to be real big because uh, I think if we play with the lead, you know we we know we can really get into our game plan. We can really, like we saw it yesterday, we can own a team down low, make it real tough for them to break us down. So uh, I think we know we're a great team from uh, from playing at the front, but uh, you know whoever goes here will be ready. And obviously it starts at the back. We saw it yesterday. Ben Bounds played a f fantastic game, obviously keeping you in the game until you got that go-ahead goal as well, and he's uh, he started well again today. Yeah, I mean, he was outstanding yesterday. Uh, you know, he's a big game goalie. Uh, just basically followed up where he uh, left off yesterday. You know, we made a few big ones there when we needed him. But, uh, you know, the guys got, you know, utter confidence in him. We got a great course, 60 men. He had a great day yesterday. So uh, we're expecting more of the same from those guys. Just finally, you had a quick che team chat, obviously, bringing him into the room, bringing him together. What was the general gist of the message? More of the same. Yeah, we were happy. We were real happy with our 20. Uh, you know, a few minor adjustments, but, I mean, more of the same felt we were the better team we were on the front foot more than they were so uh just making sure you know everyone's bought in and we'll uh, keep into the game plan jamie thanks very much for your time no worries thank you we'll have more reaction for you at the end of the second and start of the third period with pete spencer and the teams at rink level
Sheffield Steelers are just retaking the ice ahead of the middle period of this Predictabet grand final. So last season's final saw 11 goals, but throughout the history of the Elite League playoff final, low scoring games are the norm. The last time the Steelers won back to back playoffs, which is what they're seeking this year, they won both of those finals by two goals to nil. One of Cardiff's recent defeats back in 2012 was also by a score of two to nil. How long will we have to wait for this opening goal? Mentioned that the shot count was 11-7 in Cardiff's favour. They've also had the only power play of the game, but they went 0 for 1. So the Steelers are all out. The last few Devils making their way out as well. We're just over a minute away from the restart of this game. Jamie Elson saying that the message to the Devils team was pretty much more of the same. I imagine that it won't be too different from Paul Thompson to his men. No, not at all. It's both teams are playing really solid and really well, and they've got to keep doing the little things right, and the chances are going to come, and take them when they come. Because the chances will come. They always come. Just looking at the shot. will be five well. on five as the period restarts. Steelers have their starting five out ready. The Devils just choosing which unit they're going to send out to match up against them. The Devils in red, the Steelers in white and orange. Second period of the Elite League Grand Final, sponsored by Predictabet. About to get underway. Referee Darnell has the puck at centre ice. Referee Hicks waiting on the near side for everything to be A-OK. -okay. And they get the signal. And the face-off comes back the way of the Sheffield Steelers. First possession for them in this second period. But well, they don't touch the puck out of the zone, and the Devils are straight in. Oh, the pass is played behind Haddad. The opportunity fades away. Bentavolio nicely inside to Richardson, but Haddad had crossed the line too soon, and the Devils fans groan. There's a good opportunity there, that little breakdown, and the timing was just off. Both teams are going to stick with the same lines. No need to change after just 17 seconds have run off the clock. Steelers flip it high through neutral ice. Wallace gloves it down. Trying to send it towards wide. Didn't find its target. But back with Steelers. And the Steelers are going to be offside here. Wallace had to retreat, couldn't go chasing after the puck. Long pass forward, looking after Haddad. O'Connor has broken his stick on the play. He's going to have to try and play this with his skates and his glove and his body. The Steelers are in a little bit of a trouble here. O'Connor has borrowed a stick from one of the Steelers' forwards. More important for the defenseman to have it than for Levi Nelson. Luckily, they're both left-handed shots, and O'Connor can send it down. Armstrong is putting the pressure on Lewis. Steelers just about completed that line change in time. And that's good hands, ruffling the outside of the net was Dowd. First sight on goal for the Sheffield Steelers in this second period. Dowd looking towards Nelson. Still that broken stick lying on the blue line as the Devils enter on the far side with Pope. Runberg back up the boards, only as far as Pope. That one deflects and it hits the netting. And we'll get a stoppage, we can clear up that loose lumber. Bad time to break a stick, but he'd done a good job to get back. And I think it was uh, Levi Nelson passed his stick to him. Ben makes a great play up the ice, he doesn't ice it and they get a change. To see him again, it's a cagey start from both teams and uh, we need this first goal. Top line out for Cardiff. Defensive pairing two. Asselin with Pope and Martin. Steelers will try and skate this away. And it'll work out nicely. Matheson always keen to join the rush. Fretter towards goal. It's high. And Bounce flicks it on its way up. And beyond the plexiglass for a stoppage. 
Steelers will be happy to get down the other end of the ice. Off one by Lane Ulmer, the oldest player on the ice. He's had such a good season, 22 goals, points total in the 60s. And here's Neely. Armstrong's in front, that's where he goes. It comes all the way out to Fretter. He snaps it, and I think it was blocked by his own man. And now the Devils might try and come two on two. Arena forced wide. Francilla will reach it first and just settles the puck down. The Steelers will skate it away. A little bit of open ice for the first time in a while. And Armstrong, striking it inside again, shoots into the block. Follow-up slap shot is kicked away by Bounds. Matheson sent it goalwards, and Bounds sent it away. The Steelers have to clear out of the zone. That was a huge opportunity for Colton Fretter. Just had the reverse angle on that, and it was just going to nestle within the upright of uh, Ben Bounds. Big chance for the Steelers. And Bounds saved everything that was thrown at him yesterday. Steelers have not avoided the offside. They thought they might have done for a moment. I'd like to see that one again. I'm, I'm not too sure. <laughs> Steelers look like they've found a little bit of jump. They look a bit as if they want to get the legs going and open the game up. And they're going to have to have more of that. all the way around the board to the far side and Martin sent through traffic Mustakov's out beyond his crease to make the save he does like to skate out and meet a shot Mustakov's and we see it there he's always challenging high in his paint and then I think the guy gets some bodies in there make him play smaller just plant someone in front of him so he can't come out make him play small take his eyes away we see Andreas Valdix coming back onto the ice, just looking at that right skate as he brought it back onto the ice, so maybe an equipment problem there. Hopefully he's had that sorted out for the uh, Steelers' sake. John Armstrong has also had to go and get himself a new stick. A little bit of a delay here while the officials chat with the timekeepers. Not quite sure what it is that's causing the hold-up. Looks as though they're happy enough now. Whistle goes, and we can get this game back underway. Still scoreless in the early stages. The second period of this playoff final. Hotham plays the pass straight to Matthew Watt, and he gives it to Wallace, and he gives himself something to chase. Exchanging passes with Watt. goal and out to the near side David Phillips slaps one it hits Batch finds Wallace he sends it in and Bounds gloves it with wow just waiting for anything that might have dropped down again it's hard to get inside both teams and they're playing solid they're inside the dots defending and they're making it very very difficult Fournier can't stick handle beyond doubt he sent the puck back down the ice and this will be icing the longer this game goes on the more and more important that that first goal becomes not too many clear looks at goal in the first four minutes of this second period. Can the Devils make something happen here? Had Adam Bentivoglio get it back to Fournier. He's tied up with O'Connor, yes. that's going to be a penalty. 
O'Connor lost his stick in all that. I think he's going to be the one penalised. Indeed he is. They're going to call that a hook rather than a holding mistake. That's what O'Connor wants. But it'll be power play number two coming up for the Cardiff Devils. Well, the last power play never brought much, and we'll see if they're a bit more direct here. Um, it's a tough call, you know. I can see why, but also I think it wasn't really making a difference. I think it was a clever play with the, guy, with the offensive guy with the puck, and he caught, he held on to the stick. And Here's Pope, shot deflects high and goes up and out of play. Devils' power play has been at over 28% this season, the league's best. He's racked up an elite league high of 88 goals with a man advantage. Uh, uh, uh. Let's quickly check in with Pete Spencer and the call on that minor. And it's two minutes for uh, Ben O'Connor, timed at 24.08. The noise down here is so noisy, didn't actually hear the announced call out. Wow, with the shot, it was blocked by Fournier, and then Wallace comes in with a hit and it nearly turned it over for Wah. Sealers four checking hard and nearly making something short-handed. Crowd are right into this now. Looking for the breakthrough. Devils with the man advantage. Listen to this noise. Martin. Ulmer's the option in front. Morissette's near side. Pope is deeper. Pope shoots. Pope scores! Wow. There's the breakthrough. Well, we talked about getting pucks through, shooting the puck, and wow, what a shot. Quick release. Great shot. Well, 24-53 is the time that the Cardiff Devils great shot. find their way through. We'll get official confirmation of the goal. If it is Pope's, it'll be 30 on the season in all elite league competition. And it's the Devils fans who are jubilant right now and a large selection of neutral fans as well. Enjoy seeing the team in red hit the front. And the Sheffield Steelers, like they did yesterday, are going to have to come from behind if they want to retain their playoff title. Bretter, Armstrong, always direct, Armstrong just forced away from the goal by Richardson who got back and made a good contribution. Collision behind the balls, it's poked away and the Steelers don't get this one out of the zone. Richardson across, slap shot, oh well blocked by the Steelers. Mustakovs settles this one down behind the goal. Gets beyond Francilla to the Devils, Bentavolio. He sends it around to Pope. Richardson, he can be dangerous from here. Feeds it to Bentavolio. But lifting the stick was Francilla. He's under pressure, and the puck's been turned over. The Steelers fans don't like it. They want to call in their favour. Not had one yet. The only two power plays have gone to the Devils, and they've made the most recent one count. Reddick hammers it. It was off target. Card was starting to move the puck east to west, low and side to side, and then up to the top, and it's it's taking the coverage away and getting more shots to the net. Arson's Arson broken his stick. The Steelers again have a defenseman playing without a stick. Gives a shove. He doesn't have a stick to play the puck with at the moment. Strachan gets it off the boards. Sends it in. Great tip. Mustakovs denies Martin. Opportunity here. Reddick. That's high and wide and not as good as it perhaps should have been from that position. Pope across. Reddick gets another go. Mustakovs makes a save this time. The Devils are on top at the moment. Can they find a second? Puck movement is good. It's a little bobbly on that pass perhaps. They're still camped out in front of Mustakovs who saves it and covers with a crowd around him. Yeah, it's a great chef. Cardiff starting to spread the top more and it changes the cover, it changes the angles of defence and they're doing a lot of clever things. They must talk about that at the end of the period. It's 
It's great coaching from Andrew Love. Great coaching. Some great adjustments. And just confirmation of that first devil score. Matt Pope scoring in his ninth game in a row off the underside of the bar, assisted by Joey Martin. And the goal timed at 24-53. Cardiff lead 1-0. Joined from the Sohoku Free Blades in Asia. He also spent time in Austria, Italy, Denmark and North America. And he's making a huge impact in South Wales. And he's made a huge impact on this predict to bet playoff weekend. A goal yesterday and the opening goal of the final today on a five on four power play. As we talked about Jonathan, a goal. It's got the game going, really going now. Cardiff are feeling better about themselves and Sheffield are going to have to get going again. But we've seen this last night's game and Sheffield get better as the game went on. Morissette, the Devils captain. Too early to say that he's got one hand on that trophy, but he'll certainly be hoping to have both of them in a couple of hours' time. Ulmer with the intercept and the clearance down the ice. Mustakov felt he had to play it. Didn't think his defenseman was going to win the race. And now the board battle continues. A couple from each side digging away at it, and it's the Steelers who just about get the better of it. Hotham who clears up for the Devils in neutral ice. Matheson. Touch forward, left for Dowd. Switched across to the far side. O'Connor fakes the shot and then tests out bounds, and the glove hand is good. O'Connor, the player who was in the penalty box when the Cardiff Devils scored that go-ahead goal. Trying to make amends. Faked out the camera operator, but not Ben Bounds. Westerling good on the draw. Matheson to Wallace. Sent towards goal, and it's caught up in the... Equipment somewhere, where's that going to be? Still waiting for it to drop loose, there it is. Another nice face-off play there, and they, they make a little flop to the top, it creates a shooting chance, and Cardiff do a great job of blocking shots and fronting pucks, and right there, I think it was Reddick, straight up there, fronts the puck. Strong work from Bentavolio against Watt. Watt gets back and makes his life difficult. Now Romberg with Hazard closing in. Matheson to Wallace. Down the wall only as far as Hotham. And the Elite League first All-Star team as he has been every season that he's been with the Cardiff Devils. Devils getting a clean sweep of the individual awards. Netminder defenseman and forward of the year. Haddad with the shot, Mustakov sees it on its way. Westerling floats it towards goal and Watt closes in and gets the Steelers a face-off. They've had a little bit more zone time, the Steelers, since falling behind. Yeah, 100%. They're, 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 they've upped a level of speed and I think they're getting deeper, quicker and they're being more direct. They have to play desperate, but, you know, it's only half a game going here. There's a lot, a lot of hockey left here. Devils fans making the noise, the Steelers fans try and respond. Can their team respond down on the ice? Kicked out of the face off Martin. The Pope who steps in and goes head to head with Armstrong. Armstrong cleanly back to Francilla. Shot straight into the legs of Strachan. It's the Devils defenseman who opened the scoring yesterday. Brings them across the line, shoots behind the net and broke his stick in the process. It's happened to a couple of Steelers already in this game. That one's given away towards Asselin and now to Martin. And there's the shot and the save from Mustakovs. And Strachan got a new stick and tested Mustakovs. Cardiff are feeling pretty good right now. You know, we talked earlier about how guys feel in games like this. I think that goal just gave Cardiff another level right now and, you know, 
Sheffield have to match it. Yeah, they've got a little bit more offense and they'll be coming in the zone, but they really need to get going here. The next goal is massive in this game. Here's Asselin. Trying to get it towards Pope. There's a crowd of white and orange at the top of the crease, and they broke it up. Neely skates so well, tries to take on the shot. It deflects away from goal. It's hit the netting, and we got a bit of pushing and shoving. And it's Reddick, and it's Neely. Presser's in there too, strapping in the thick of things. And the linesman try and separate it. I don't think we're going to get any calls from this one. Approaching the halfway point of this predictor bet grand final. Devils leading by a Matt Pope goal to nil. Scored on the power play, 24-53. Another good win for the Steelers. O'Connor's shot deflected. Backhand try, it's caught up in the crowd. There are a lot of Devils players in the way. But we've got a penalty called here against the Devils. And there's a standing ovation for the officials from the Sheffield Steelers supporters who feel that call is long overdue. Richardson heading for a seat. First Steelers power play upcoming. Get the official call on the penalty shortly from Pete Spencer at rink level. Steelers have been good on draws recently. They'll want another one here, and they are. That allows them to get this power play set straight up. Westerling. Trying to bring it in. Jam it in from the side of the goal was Neely. Bounds was alert to it. Lots of options on this power play for the Steelers. Westerling will snap it. It's blocked, painfully so. Hotham back to his skates. And then another block shot by Morissette, but he doesn't clear the zone, but this one will get out of the zone. Meyer's lost his stick in doing so. He'll pick it back up now. And confirmation of that two-minute penalty for Mark Richardson. Two minutes for hooking, timed at 29.55. Minute and 15 left on the power play. It's with Colton Fretter. Now it's with Westerling, O'Connor. Didn't have a shooting lane, back to Fretter. Whilst trying to provide a screen, the shot is blocked into the corner off Hotham. He tries to go down the boards and it's blocked by the Steelers. It's a long shift for the PK guys here. They've been out the whole time so far. If Sheffield keep control here, no. Yep, they're still in the zone. This will be tough for the Cardiff to get a change here. And it's a long change back to the bench in the second period. Neely tried to play it out front and Really didn't hit it as he was wanting to. Now there should be a chance for Myers to clear it away. How ambitious will they be at the end of a long shift? 30 seconds left on the penalty kill. It forces a save from Mustakovs. And the Devils do get a new line out there. Good hands from Nelson. The puck just slides to the end wall. Armstrong is trying to win it back. Big final chance. 10 seconds of power play. Oh, and Dow draws the best save of the game so far from Bounds. That's a big chance for Robert Dow deal. Penalty is over. Richardson comes out of the box. A successful first kill. It was the second power play of the game that worked for the Devils. And Dow tests Bounds again. And the game has just opened up a little bit. Yep, 100%. I think the game was always going to open up at some point because now they're just starting to play and the speeds went up. They've been a lot more direct. Guys are probably getting a little bit tired as well. So Matheson towards goal and into the glove of bounds. You know, we talked last night about the power play, although there's no goals there, now they're getting a bit of momentum, Sheffield, and they can start feeling as if they're getting more zone time. It makes them feel better. Maybe they'll get something off of this the next few shifts. The 
decent shots from Dowd on the power play and then Armstrong at the end of the power play. Sealers jump too early at the face-off. So Wallace will have to be replaced on the draw. Jonathan Phillips will step in. The Devils forwards first to react to it. It's Morissette. He comes forward, he snaps it on goal, Mustakov saved, a rebound chance. Farina didn't get much on it and Mustakov was able to get back. The puck is sitting on the back of the net at the moment. The Steelers trying to freeze it, it has come free and they've got to play it. And Morissette was trying to lift the stick of Jonathan Phillips, he resisted it. And now Fitzgerald can go chasing. Puts the shove on Hotham, he's done well. Drops his stick, picks it back up. Look at the hustle from Jonathan Phillips, nearly won it back but doesn't quite work out in the end, and the Devils send it in deep and go for a change. Five off, five on. Puck was deflected, no icing. The Steelers will get in their line change. The Devils will spread it to Haddad. Bentavolio looking for a touch from Crowder. Fretter. Around the wall for Armstrong. Fretter and Reddick come together. Collision in the corner. Well, I might need a little bit of help. Fretter provides it. Reddick still right with him. Wow. Armstrong. And that one slides its way to Haddad. Good skating speed of Haddad and from Armstrong. Dowd. Flick to the far corner. Lewis back for Cardiff. 5.40 remaining in the second period. Still that power play goal from Pope, the only one of this game. Baldick's through, but too much red traffic in the way. Yeah, they're going to have to start getting pucks deeper and direct. It's the, the, they're getting success at times when they get a bit deeper and direct. Also, skate, use your speed. Don't stop your feet moving. Cardiff are big and strong, so you've got to get the D turning. Nelson took the shot on. It went off the legs of the defenseman. Nelson's got it back, drops it back. Ronberg, oh, he made a really poor contact with that one. Just as we talked about, they got, they got them turning. They managed to get the puck up, there's an opportunity, they have to do more of that. It was a good shift. Will be icing, the Devils won't be able to make the line change that they were trying to. The opportunity for Rönberg a couple of moments ago. That's just four goals on the season. It's away from the Steelers for 21 games this year. The Steelers haven't quite got enough through as far as bounds in this game. Devils face off win, they want to get the puck over the red line. Icing is waved off, so they will get a couple of changes in now. That's what they were hoping for following that icing whistle. That could be and too many the men called The Devils player who is stepping off the ice, nothing is called. Must have got the change completed in time. It definitely hit a devil skate. It put, came to a complete stop, but the officials were happy that there were only five skaters out there. Cardiff do a really good job at stripping pucks and the boards low, and Sheffield can't stand still because Cardiff are physically stronger than Sheffield low, and if they want to get into this game, they've got to keep moving or move the puck quicker. Arson spins round. He could not batch off the puck. If you can. The board battle continues. Chopping of sticks and boards. Puck's in there somewhere and now. Moves near side. It's excellent work there from Eric Neely just to free the puck. <laughs> Neely sends it into the offensive zone. It won't be there for long. Farina with a nice pass out. Ulmer moves it on. Shot comes in. Mustakov saves. It drops into a dangerous area. The Steelers clear it away. Fretter pays the price. As he takes the hit that was incoming. Armstrong's outnumbered, Ulmer 
Always oh, played it behind Morissette. Wah knocks it down. Have to do it alone for the moment. The support is on its way in. His shot went over the top. David Phillips. Ben O'Connor. Backdoor play. Oh, he got a touch from Wah, and that might have just taken it away from Armstrong. Reddick keeping him away from the puck. Does come back to Armstrong. Steelers overtime hero from yesterday. Wallace. Right with Ulmer. Wah. Chance out front. Bounds makes the save, and the Devils get the clearance in just in time. Been knocking on the door, Jonathan. We've got to keep going. That last shift from Verena was unreal. He must have made three, four, five hits. His energy was a great shift from the Cardiff player. Fitzgerald tried to play a centering pass. It got broken up. Fitzgerald again. Trying to get it towards Wallace. It's broken up by Haddad and caught on the bench by Steelers back up for Brad Day. Two thirteen remain in the second period. Remember at the end of this period we'll get some more reaction from the Cardiff Devils bench. Gerald can't touch it further down the boards. He can kick it out though. That's just as good. Really good if it finds its way to Valdex. Any test bounds and the save made up high. They've got a little bit of momentum now after that power play. They've way more zone time. They've been more shots. You know, and with that will come confidence and they'll get a little bit more control in there and get to start making some plays if they keep doing what they're doing just now. Sheffield's transition's been quicker. They're getting in the zone more direct and it's helping them. It's making Carter play defense. The Dowd and Nelson pairing is out for the Steelers, and Dowd was really buzzing on his last shift, flying around with real speed and intensity. Nelson took that away from Lewis. Westerling. Knocked down, Pentavolio. Nudges it down the boards and Martin plays it across. Big chance, Morissette. Mustakov's got a glove on it. It's a big save. Oh, and then a hit against the boards. And we have a stoppage. I think the puck went up and out of play. Oh, and we're going to maybe get a punch or two thrown in here. Bentavolio and Dowd coming together. I think a couple he's... of others pair off as well. But what an opportunity for Morissette this was on the breakaway. It's a great save. Yeah, it's a great save. I just want to see this hit. Yeah, he might call him out for that one. I, I don't know what the penalty might be there, but I think he's called it. Well, the faceoff is coming outside of the zone. I'm not sure he has. He's not the same, same part of the ice that Levi Nelson took a boarding call yesterday. Yeah, it was exactly there, but I think he's got a weaver one now. Well, the face-off is actually going to come now inside the zone, but the Sealers have five skaters out there. The penalty box door remains closed, so there will be no call. That was a huge chance for Cardiff to double the lead, and great save by the Moose, and it's a one-goal game still. Mustakoff's made some important saves yesterday as the Steelers launched their comeback. Might that be the start of something for Sheffield here this afternoon? Another deflected shot out of play. The faceoff will stay in the offensive zone for the Cardiff Devils. Hotham skating into the circle, scoring again for the Devils. They've taken a 2 0 lead. We talk about that face-off all the time, Jonathan. He gets to walk down near half them. They all do. He is dangerous when he goes down that wall. He can't let them come into that area of the ice and get that shot away. Great shot. 
The Devils lead 2-0 in the playoff final. And the Elite League's best defenseman shows exactly why he got that recognition again this season. It's a really hard play for the D-man because he's got to reattach on Hotham. And I think he, I need to see the replay, but I'm pretty sure they get taken into the net and Hotham's a free man on the puck. It's a 2-0 game. Maybe this hoodoo Cardiff have is going to break. Offside called on the Devils. The Cardiff Devils fans in full voice right now. And why wouldn't they be? Yeah, it's a bullet. It's a great shot. Ronberg actually tried to do a great job and reattaching onto the puck, but it's a great shot. It's a 2-0 game. Sheffield have to find something here, and it has to happen quick. Sheffield were 2-0 down yesterday. They were 4-2 down yesterday, and they came back to level it before winning in overtime. They were two goals behind last year against the Cardiff Devils. The Devils are the only team to lose an Elite League final having had a two-goal lead, and they've done it twice. Surely it can't happen for a third time. Big 40 seconds coming up here for the Devils. O'Connor. Put comes up the boards to Neely. Steelers looking to get back into it. Armstrong. Puck gets away from him. Sent on goal by Fretter. It got blocked. Devils clear it away. Francilla back to it. He's got a couple of four checkers on top of him. Neely. Poked away by Ulmer. Fretter. Arson hits it. Great block from my. Oh, from. Sorry, it was Farina who blocked it, and then he paid the price with the hit. And that will bring about the end of the period. And what a period it's been for the Cardiff Devils. They've scored twice and jumped out to a two goal lead. Matt Pope on the power play and Andrew Hotham even strength. The 25th and 39th minute respectively. And that has given the Cardiff Devils a huge chance to end a playoff hoodoo that stretches back to 1999. Players are making their way off the ice. We're going to try and get some reaction for you from the Cardiff Devils side of things. Uh, man, Pete Spencer is down rink level, and I believe he's got the Cardiff Devils' Mark Richardson with him. Yeah, Jonathan, I'm just down here with Mark Richardson. Uh, Mark, the, the breakthrough came early on in the period. Talk me through it. Yeah, um, obviously... Uh, you know, we, we knew that tonight would be uh, a big night for taking taking advantage if we got any power plays, and uh, Matt Pope uh, comes up with a huge shot there. Matt Pope, obviously huge in the semi-final, two uh, a goal for him yesterday, and obviously a, a goal tonight. How important has he been throughout the season? Uh, huge. I mean, I think I read somewhere he scored in each of his last nine games or something. You know, and um, he's so dangerous with the puck, and, uh, and like I said, you know, to, to put one in on the power play is huge for us. He also got the assist on the Andrew Hotham goal as well. How huge was that at the end of the period when Sheffield had had so much possession and chances towards the end of the period? Yep, yep, they were coming at us and, uh, you know, it was a big play. Obviously, you know, um, Popa wins a big draw there back to, to Andrew Hotham. Then uh, his skill takes over and it's a great goal and um, gives us 2 nothing into the third. But it's a long way to go. Obviously, a big 20 minutes coming now. Do you see out the game? Do you sit back or do you play the Cardiff way and keep fighting? No, you can't sit back. You can't sit back. I think you got to go, keep going for it. You got to be smart with uh, in certain areas, but there's no sitting back. You got to go for it. Is there the feeling amongst the squad that you can uh, you can finally get this one across the line and, and secure that playoff title that you so desperately want? Yeah, we're very confident there, but we know they're going to come at us, so we got to be ready. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. We thank Mark Richardson for his time. What a period for the Cardiff Devils. Uh, Jake Morissette is breathing a sigh of relief. His breakaway opportunity that was denied by Mustakovs. Well, the Devils weren't kept away from that second goal for long as we relive some of the best moments from this second period. So Jonathan Fernley up here on the commentary gantry 
with Great Britain and now Brayhead Clan head coach Pete Russell. And Pete, Paul Thompson has been in this position before. He was in this position yesterday. Yesterday, um, I just think Sheffield have to do what they were doing at the end. I thought they got a lot of zone time and they got to get pucks through Cardiff, make it very, very difficult to get pucks to the net. And I'd like to see Sheffield maybe attack more down on them if they can, maybe some high cycle plays off the D, get them involved, try and pull Cardiff out a little bit, maybe moving pucks across the back of the net to try and pull Cardiff out to the other side, make them rotate zone. But, you know, I think they're both playing really well. I think the second goal was a huge, huge goal. Came off a face-off, played it. Tom will tell you in his interview that they talk about it all the time. Cardiff do it a lot. But, hey, a two-goal game, to say two goals is the worst lead in a hockey game. Hey, the Steelers get one, Cardiff start feeling about it. They get two, they have huge momentum and the game turns, and they've got to hold on to these things. But they've got to do the little things right. They've got to be desperate. They've got to be desperate. But for me, they've got to get the next goal. We heard Mark Richardson say that the Devils won't be changing their plan, won't be changing their style. It's so hard not to, though, isn't it, when you when a title is so close? Yeah, but I don't think Cardiff will. As I said to you at the start of the game, they keep doing the same thing. They stick to the process. They're organised. They've got a great core and camaraderie, and I don't, I don't see them changing. I think they're going to play the way they've been playing the whole game. And, you know... I think that's why they're champions. They keep doing it. They stick to the process. I, there's no way it'll change anything. So the scoring in that second period then, it was Pope assisted Martin on a five-on-four power play at 24-53. And then goal for Hotham. Classed as unassisted, even strength at 38-41. Devils took one penalty for two minutes in that period. Steelers also took one penalty for two minutes, but the Devils scored on their power play to go to one for two. Steelers 0 for 1 with a man advantage. You feel that another power play might be a route back into it for the Steelers because they did get some looks at goal on their man advantage, and possibly if they could get another one, they might have learned a little bit about the way the Devils were setting up and a way to break through. I just think that for Sheffield to get back into this game, they have to be really gritty around Cardiff's net. They have to. The other thing is, I don't think they can stand still in the low zone. I think they've got to start moving more and using the speed they have, walking off the boards if they can into some shooting angles and maybe getting some rebounds off Bouncy. He's seen a lot of pucks, so the pucks aren't getting to him. And you know you've got to get Bouncy moving. So that's the best of the second period. We're now going to go down to rink level. Our man Pete Spencer is with the Elite League chairman, Tony Smith. Tony, as we stand here today, fantastic showpiece final. And around the Elite League as a whole, crowds are up. That must be good news for the sport of ice hockey in Britain. Yeah, of course it is. Uh, we're working very hard at the moment to improve the product because we firmly believe as a, as a management group that improving the product will improve the crowds generally. And... Uh, we're about 18% uh, up on last year and the year before, so very pleased about the crowds right now. And of course, the, the question always gets asked at fan forums and discussions around the Elite League, uh, what's happening in terms of TV deals, in terms of seeing more uh, of Isaac on the TV and, and other media as well? Well, we don't like a TV deal. You know, we don't hide from the fact that TV is a great way of promoting our product. We, we, we know it's a fact that uh, ice hockey can be one of the best uh, kept secrets in, in this country. We need more people to find out about it. Radio, TV, help that. Uh, but the deal's got to be right. You know, clubs survive right now on very tight uh, budgets and TV as a streaming method is, is an income source that they can't do without unless there's a replacement for it. So we're all working very hard behind the scenes to get the right deal for us. There's plenty of deals out there, but the right one's the one that counts. And in terms of streaming at the moment, how much of a revenue stream is that for the clubs? It's only a small revenue income, but any income is important. So you can't take it away without you give them something in, in replacement to it. So we're working again, uh, as I say, with two or three options right now. But uh, anything that we take away from the clubs d does have a detrimental effect on the bottom line at the end of the year. And we have to be very careful there. Of course, we've seen in football this year goal line technology being brought in. In the Elite League in ice hockey, goal line technology being brought in as well. How do you think it's working at, at these clubs? I think we're learning. I think is, uh, it's important to know it's our first full year of GLT. And uh, 
Some clubs tend to do it a little bit better than others. We will continue to work with goal line technology. We had a system uh, it, earlier on in the season where it was just over the line. That was the only check we did. But there are nine other checks in place now to make sure that we use GLT to its full advantage. As we get more used to it and the officials get used to it, then we'll find that it will play a bigger part and, and, and probably more enjoyment for the fans as well. Of course, it played a big part in the semi-final yesterday for the Sheffield Steelers. Two goals went to goal review and, uh, and we're giving the thumbs up. That's right, and it's great. It's, uh, it, it's a case of uh, getting the decision right. You've seen in football where it can take a while. The same in ice hockey. You know, we want to get it right. We've got the cameras now in events like this, so we want to make sure if it's a goal, it's a goal. But uh, no, no mistakes. You also moved to a four-man officiating crew at the start of, uh, well, midway through the season, actually. Um, how is that working? Because obviously part of the, the focus there was bringing through the next generation of officials as well. Yeah, the idea of the four-man system is to bring through uh, the next generation, as you say. So, so the kids who are uh, the up-and-coming officials, we, we have a, a set of officials right now and uh, the years are catching up on one or two of them, I'm afraid, so we'll lose some over the next two or three years. We have to find the replacements and find them now, so giving them a four-man option allows a senior referee to work with a, a more junior official and, and teach him the game. And are there enough referees out there to, to fill a four-man at uh, you know, six games throughout the, uh, throughout the weeks? Yes, there are, uh, but what we do need, and it's a great opportunity to, to pass the message on right now, is we need ex-players, as much as anything, to come to the league and, and, and ask if they can be trained to be officials. A lot of them are probably thinking, I'll maybe give it a go. We need you to pick up the phone, we need you to email and text us and ask if you can be considered. Some of these players have got great knowledge of the game and it's important that we, we enhance that knowledge and, and, and get them. Skating is obviously not a problem for them. Get them on board and into the programme quickly. And of course, the Department of Player Safety is something that you've made adjustments on this year as well in terms of you, you've brought in a former NHL linesman to assist with how the suspensions are kind of handed out and how you work out what infraction deserves what suspension. How do you feel that that's working at this moment? It's a learning curve. Okay, uh, some clubs are finding it difficult because there's a culture in the elite league that we're, we're slowly moving along from that, that fighting's the key. Well, I think we all know now that fighting's not the key. Uh, the, the, the day of the tough guy in the team is probably coming to an end and skill and speed, clearly, as you've seen today, are, are the key factor in getting bums on seats. And, and I think that uh, Lyle Spitz uh, is, is the guy we're talking about. He's heading up our uh, disciplinary panel right now. Uh, he's doing a very good job. I think he, it's a learning curve for all of us to understand, at times, his decisions. But if his decisions work as well for the elite league as they have in other leagues around the, uh, Europe, then we'll find that we're very well placed. You've also expanded the Elite League this year to 12 teams. You brought in Guildford Flames and Milton Kings Lightning as well, two teams that have pretty much impressed everyone that, that's played them, taken a few scalps along the way as well. What do you make to the expansion teams this year? I think it was the right decision uh, to go from 10 to 12. It gave us four com three conferences of four, which is important because it allows the clubs to stay local for, for more games. Milton Keynes and Guildford being great uh, assets to this league, very, very well run organisations, both of them, uh, and I for one am very, very pleased that they're part of this, uh, this organisation. Could we see further expansion, maybe not next season, but in a couple of seasons? I guess it depends, you know, we've all got ideas where we'd like to be, but it's finding the right fit for the elite league, the, uh, the building has to be right, the organisation skills have to be right. Uh, and location as well, you know, we, we, we all know geography is, uh, is a key factor in this. So uh, if someone came along with, a, with an organisation in, say, Newcastle area or somewhere like that, then we'd be looking at, and maybe round the table one day saying, well, that's a great fit for us. Can we do anything? But uh, we've tried Newcastle before. It didn't work, but uh, maybe that was the skill set behind the, uh, the organisation at the time. Of course, there's always the, the, the rights as well to the London franchise, which are still available, I understand, as well. That's right, London's still very much on the cards. Um, a franchise has been allocated to London, uh, and like uh, everyone else in the league, I hope that happens, and uh, the sooner the better, because it will put the Elite League uh, on the map as far as the capital's concerned. Obviously, when we talk about the teams in the Elite League, one team that's maybe had a bit of misfortune this year has, has been the Edinburgh Capitals, of course. Look like they may fall into administration, but they've been stopped from going into administration and it looks like there could be more investment, more funding coming into that club now. 
the Caps are trying hard to stay with us. That's that's the, that's the story right now. Um, they, they're a great organisation and they're part of this league. They always have been part of the Elite League. And before the Elite League was started, they were part of the old uh, BNL. And it's important that we try and keep the Caps on board. But we can only do so much. And uh, it's, it's very much down to the fans and the organisation to work together, work things out and see if they can be part of this organisation and this league next year. Of course, things are going well for the Elite League. What about the, the leagues below? I know that's not directly your responsibility, but obviously those players from those lower divisions then feed into the team. And with the de uh, demise of the, of the, e um, of the EPL, um, obviously there's a bigger gap between this league and the leagues below it. There is, and, and that's a shame really. The EPL was a, a great stepping stone for players to come up to the Elite League. The gap between what we've got now and, and, and the Elite League is huge. Uh, but some clubs are working behind the scenes very hard. You look at the Steelers uh, right now and their profile, how they're bringing kids through. Other clubs in this league are, are doing the same, Nottingham and one or two others, are finding these young kids and they're developing them day by day in their training sessions to make them uh, Elite League players of the future. Of course, each team now has allowed three under 23 players to add to their roster as well and get them regular in the rotation as well. And teams, as you mentioned, the Sheffield Steelers, with players like Liam Kirk and Kieran Brown and Cole Shudra, are taking that opportunity. That's right. And uh, Liam Kirk's a, a far, a, an example of where all kids want to be. You know, the under 10s when they start playing ice hockey, if they can see a pathway uh, such as Liam Kirk to come through the junior system and then into the senior ranks and the pros and then get drafted, well, you know, the, the mind boggles as to how many kids may decide to give it a go. And that's not only good for the Sheffield Steelers in, in terms of their profile, bringing through players, but also good for the elite league to show that someone can come from the British ranks and potentially be drafted into the, the highest league in the land. That's right, and uh, you look at the, uh, the Great Britain teams as well, because the spin-off comes with the Great Britain teams. Right now, the Elite League is a good standard of hockey, uh, and it's showing on the uh, Elite League as well, on the uh, world, world stage. You know, we've just won gold at under-18s, and uh, the, the senior men will take, uh, take to the ice very shortly in their uh, sort of first, first season in the higher league. And that's really important for, for the profile of British ice hockey as well. How fantastic was that result? Just turning for a moment to talk about Great Britain and that achievement at under 18s level. Obviously, the men go uh, in a couple of weeks' time as well. Yeah, um, 18s are the future without a doubt. 20s, again, the future of, uh, of, of international hockey in the, in, in the country. And we have to keep uh, promoting that. We have to keep developing these kids. Under 23s are great for the teams, but we have to work with kids from 10 year old upwards and get them into this game and start to teach them the right and wrong way of playing ice hockey. But there is a structure in place that seems to be working. Just finally, where do you want to see the Elite League in, say, five years' time as we look ahead now into the future? I think very much of the same right now. We have 12 very good teams. I'd like to see 12 teams in the future. I'd like to see more of this. Um, this you know, when, when an event like this sells out weeks in advance, you know that you've got it right, and that's where I'd like this league to be. Tony, thank you very much for joining us. Tony Smith, Elite League Chairman. Score Sting Reese. And we thank Tony Smith for his time. So we're getting ready for the So we're getting ready for the second sorry, the third period I should say here. A few minutes away from the two teams coming back to join us. Jonathan Fernley and Pete Russell up here on the commentary gantry. Cardiff Devils leading by two goals to nil, Pope and Hotham. They led 2-0 back in 2011. And they led 3-1 back in 2017. And they weren't able to close out either of those. Sheffield Steelers, the first team back out onto the ice. They've got a job to do. And this means so much to the Cardiff Devils. They are, well, they were huge favourites before the game, even more so now. Just 20 minutes separating them and that playoff title they crave so much. Ben Bounds had a shutout yesterday. No netminder in Elite League playoff history has had back to back shutouts at the playoff finals weekend. And that's what. And there's a possibility for Ben Bounds at the moment. The 
shots on goal just being announced to the crowd. Cardiff had 11 in the first and 11 again in the second. The Steelers seven in the first and then eight for a cumulative shot count of 22-15 in Cardiff's favour. As we talked about, they've got to get pucks through and they're not getting them through, Jonathan. And 15 shots is not one in this game. They're going to have to up it here. And you know what? Last night they came out in that third period and were a different team. So maybe they're going to bring it here and we can get going again. It will be five on five as the third period gets underway. A couple of contentious calls in this game and maybe a couple of non-calls as well. It's got fans talking during the intermission. Breakthrough goal coming on that five on four power play. Following that hooking call on Ben O'Connor. Matt Pope broke the deadlock with a wicked shot into the top corner. And then late in the period, Andrew Hotham found the same top corner and has given the Devils a two goal advantage. They are just 20 minutes away. The Sheffield Steelers have been in this position before and dug themselves out of the hole. Can they do it again here with the predictor bet playoff final? Back underway and the puck straight out of play. And they get a quick whistle at the start of the third period. Steelers fans are a little quiet at the start of the third. It's the Devils who are making more of the noise. The Steelers, they just know it only takes one little spark and one little moment. John Armstrong goes and swaps sticks, gets himself a new blade ready for this face-off up against Lane Ulmer. Or maybe not. Ulmer wins the draw against Fretter. Switch to Richardson. David Phillips. And now Fretter can stride forward. War is with him. Fretter on for Armstrong. Ullman nudges it away from him. Hotham can't complete the clearance. He waved over the top of the puck. Second time around, he gets it down the boards. And Sealer switch it D to D. O'Connor. Cardiff are going to try and take the sting out of the game. They're going to play very controlled, and I think Sheffield have to be the opposite. They have to be proactive. They've got to be aggressive. They've got to find a way of turning the game. Asselin brings it back, and it just bobbles as it arrives at Mark Lewis. Couldn't keep it in the zone. The Devils send it straight back in, forcing the Steelers behind their own goal. We've already seen in this game, and we saw a lot of it in the semi-final, how the Steelers get their defensemen involved in the play, particularly O'Connor and Matheson. They've got Francilla available to them today, who can also carry the puck down the ice and make things happen in the offensive zone. Mustakov stretches out and makes a save, a third Devils goal. Really probably would be the end of it. But here comes Dowd, great skating speed, and he draws another good save from Ben Bounds, and Nelson on the follow-up, it's a double stop from Ben Bounds. That's how they're going to change the game, by skating at them, keeping your feet going, getting pucks to the net, and it's a positive shift. Arson bounce pass off the wall, nearly touches it on. Strachan is back to it, sandwiched between two Steelers. Myers tests out Mustakovs. He likes to keep the play alive, but no chance to drop that. And it will be a face-off in the offensive zone for the Devils. That double save from Ben Bounds. Looks as though he's going to be going into those World Championships in fine form. I think uh, Ben Bounds improved again this year. Now. I think he's become the real deal. Um, so a British goalie in this league at that standard is just it's a huge, huge thing. Safe percentage, of, lucky. safe percentage of 91, goals against under 2.6, and seven shutouts on the season.
Physical in the corner. That has been a physical edge to this game right throughout. Ancilla up the boards. Richardson can't stretch far enough initially. O'Connor. Trying to drive his team forward. Takes on the shot. Straight into the legs of Hotham. And Farina. Devils crowd rise. Good play across. Mustakovs may have got a piece of that. If he did, it's a wonderful save to deny Ulmer. Again, though, comes from a block shot. Cardiff block shot. Sheffield have to get in behind them. They have to have more support in the park. And they've just got to stop. They've got to get those pucks through. They can't keep getting shots blocked. Ulmer. David Phillips gives him a nudge. Farina. So impressive for the Devils this season. 29 goals. He does everything, doesn't he? He's very gritty. Finishes his plays everywhere over the ice. He makes hard plays. He banged them in for a couple of seasons in Dundee. And he's kept it going down in Cardiff. Fitzgerald from the angle. And into the glove of Bounds. And the Steelers are getting more traffic or more shots through to Ben Bounds. The double save earlier on. Another one from the angle. Well, this was the opportunity for all. Yeah, it was off, off his stick. Maybe that little bit of luck they needed, Jonathan. You know, given 3-0 there, if it doesn't hit the butt end of the stick, it's still a 2-0 game and they're two shots away. Mr. Cost did actually drop his stick in the process of making the save. Devils weren't able to engineer a follow-up chance. Levels know all too well how dangerous it can be when a netminder loses his stick. Crowd who are close wants a hand pass, they're not going to get one. Matheson. Still he goes. Mark Matheson. Matthew Watt. Both Devils defensemen close in on him. There might be room for the Steelers to bring this out with Fretter. They're trying to jam it in at it's the side of the try. goal. Bounds was alert to it. Down with pad and blocker. Valdix. Another shot block. This one comes off Haddad. It drops down. Fretter took a swipe at it. Arson. Still with the Steelers. The puck retention and recovery has been good. Sent towards Valdix. Comes back out. Arson through traffic, off bounds and away to safety. And the Devils might try and spring a counter. Bentavolio has got two options inside. Bentavolio plays the pass oh, back and look play. at the recovery from Arson. Slid into his own netminder, but with the stick down, he prevented the pass across. And Cardiff are going to get, uh, going to get more chances because Sheffield have to push the game now. They have to push the game. It's a championship game. The two goals down. They got to just throw at it. They got to go at it. Touch past the centre ice, gets Nelson moving. O'Connor sends it across, doesn't get a touch. It'll bounce to Jonas Westerling. He slaps one from the angle and it's into the blocks in front. Hotham calms it down for the Devils. Devils just complete their change and enter the offensive zone. Mustakov saves, there is a rebound. The Steelers in through Westerling. Knock it behind the goal and away to safety. Steelers just getting in each other's way at the blue line. Just give them a chance to get a fresh line out there. Pass for Neely. Went astray at centre ice. I think the big thing is when you're going to push the game, it's still important for Sheffield to have good puck management, to make good decisions, to create good chances. But they have to get a D into the rush like they're trying to do now. They have to carry pucks. They have to get deep. Well, well, Francilla 
sent it across and a good stick from Bounds. A good angle to send the puck across from, it just needed a touch. Awkward tumble from Wallace. Romberg trying to keep it in with his leg, can't manage it, but Neely read the situation well. And now he's flying forward, Neely! Steelers brought back to life through Eric Neely. Well, we talked about skating at them with speed and getting pucks through, and there you go, that's what they need. You know, they have to skate at them, they can't stop their feet going. They've got to create problems and turn card to get pucks to the net. Terrific finish from Eric Neely. 13th on the season, and maybe none more important. Back within one. And the Cardiff fans who've seen their team in this position before might be thinking, oh no, not again. But they do still lead, it's still 2-1 in favour of Cardiff. Now we got a game. And the Sheffield fans are back to life. Here's Martin, angles tight, goes round the net. Pope will do likewise, brings it out front. Strachan through and the save is made. It's a four and two. Fitzgerald all the way across. Oh, save made by Bounds on the tip in front. It's a terrific game now and it's wide open. Asselin feeds it through. Oh, he doesn't get a yeah. touch, but the Devils will get a penalty. They're going to go on the power play here. I tell you what, though, what a huge character there from uh, Cardiff after losing that goal. They came straight back up the ice, did a chance. Great play back with Sheffield. This game's going into end now. It's exciting. Predictor bet grand final is living up to its billing. And the penalty coming in uh, of, uh, against uh, Valdix, his second of the game. Devils scored on their last power play. Gotham, Haddad, Myers, Asselin and Bentavolio are out in red. First shot comes in from Haddad and it was blocked by Matthew Watt off the shins. Straight back with Haddad. Bentavolio will get the official call on the goal and the penalties at an appropriate moment. Devils searching for a second power play goal on the game. They want to get that two goal lead back. Restore that cushion. And get them a little bit closer to that playoff title. Hotham. Waiting for the time to be right. Bentavolio. It's patient from the Devils. Haddad winds and fires off target. Phillips chips it to the wall. Needs a little bit of help and will get it from Wallace. He plays it down the ice, the Steelers get their penalty killers off and a fresh set out and we're under a minute remaining on this Devils power play. And that penalty was timed at 47.34 for Andreas Vadix, two minutes for interference. Puck behind the goal with Cardiff, they'll bring it back out, opportunity, Ulmer waits and then fires it and it hits bodies and goes up and out of play. 33 seconds remaining on the man advantage. Now here's another look at that Eric Neely goal and he made it all himself. And just going back to that Neely goal, Jonathan, it's done everything to energise the fans away to my left-hand side as I stand here rink level. A sea of oranges now on its feet, clapping, willing its team on. And the assist on that goal at 46.55 going to Mika Francilla as well. So Paul Thompson justified in his decision to bring him back today. 25 seconds of power play down for the Devils. They try and squeeze one in and it came off Mustakoff into a dangerous area. Only partially cleared, Mustakov saves again, again it drops, and again the Steelers don't get it out. Really well kept in by Fournier. Ronberg now, oh he goes backwards and it only finds Morissette. Five seconds left till Valdix can return. 
Devils are pressing. Pope's shot is blocked, and the puck gets cleared. And Valdix can come back out, and it is a successful kill for the Sheffield Steelers. They've killed two out of three, but they still trail by two to one. Farina. Separated from the puck, the Steelers nudge it out to neutralize. We're setting up for a cracking finish here. Ten minutes remaining in the Elite League Predictor Bet Grand Final. Will it be Sheffield again or Cardiff at last? Still so much hockey to be played. Fretter inside, gets the shot away, takes a deflection off a stick and doesn't trouble bounds. Armstrong providing support, got Hotham right with him. Still with John Armstrong, so elusive. The puck is then knocked away from Neely. The Devils clear their own zone, Farina. Not too ambitious, just a dump and change. Long aerial pass knocked down by the Devils. There is an offside call against the Steelers. But Francilla goes backwards rather than into the offensive zone. Spread across towards Nelson. Steelers crowds anticipating, but he shoots off target. Dowd sends it back in. Shooting chance, Valdix off target. Sheffield are pushing, really pushing the game here. Valdix, he might get another chance, plays it down low, backhand through the crease and out the other side. Steelers again get to the puck on the blue line. They're keeping the pressure on the Devils. They will get a clearance this time, but only as far as Runberg, and it'll come straight back at Cardiff. Jonathan Great Matt. noise from all around the Motor Point Arena right now. Devils fans trying to lift their team. The Steelers fans are right behind theirs too. Martin. Moves it inside, opportunity, oh, it deflects away. It came off Matheson's stick as Pope looked for another. Some energy in this game now from both teams, and they're just going into end, and there's a lot of hits been made, it's physical, and there's just determination everywhere in both teams. Cardiff determined to add more, and Sheffield determined to get that second goal, to pull them right back into the game. Good work from Neely. He fancies another, gives it to Wallace. And he goes crashing off the glass behind Ben Bounds' goal. O'Connor breaks up the play. Matheson across. Oh, opportunity. It's turned over. It's Farina moving inside. Oh, and that's where the Steelers' defensemen were hustling back to. And he never did get a shot on goal. And yeah. the Steelers' turnover was not costly. Maybe Farina said he's on his backhand there, but he tried to pull it back. And he could have protected it and took it to the net. Fournier clears it, it gets past Phillips, who was pinching up. Devils fans singing the name of Justin Farina. But he might regret not getting a shot away there. Less than seven minutes remaining now. 2-1 the Devils lead. Fretta. Again, a crowd on the boards. Devils trying to outnumber him, extra support arrives from the Steelers, it's Armstrong. Back to David Phillips, back to Armstrong. Sheffield are going on a PP here, six minutes to go, it's a huge call. Big chance for Sheffield here, they have to get pucks through. Mark Lewis is the guilty man heading for a sit down. So five on four in the Steelers' favour. Both teams still have their timeouts available to them. Listen to the roar now from the Steelers' fans. They sense that this might be their moment. 6.31 remaining in the game. They're 0 for 1 on the power play so far. Devils do get the puck clear. 
And it's Mark Lewis that sits two minutes for high sticks, caught at 53-29. You feel this is the opportunity maybe for the Sheffield Steelers on the power play. Fretter around. Off them first to it. Will he get it out of the zone? No, not past O'Connor. Westerling. Neely. Steelers love to just draw Matthew Warr into the slot and let him get a snapshot away. Westerling across to the far side. Big slap shot. Save made. Warr on the follow up. It wouldn't settle for him. So close backhanded. Takes the hit in the corner but keeps the puck with his side but only momentarily. It looks like Westerling Sheffield have uh, changed their PP. They're loading up Ben O'Connor for his one timer. It's a great decision. Westerling collided with the official. Bumped into Tom Darnell. Westling's back on the bench. Darnell looks to be up and okay. 52 seconds left on the Cardiff Minor. Armstrong. Doesn't seem to be any way through. Puck comes down the boards and Dowd can't get there. Morissette can. It's another good clearance from this Devils penalty kill. It's very difficult to get in the zone against Cardiff. The they hold the blue lane and are strong in the boards and maybe some cross ice dumps. Devils with a third best penalty kill in the league this season. Puck is tied up against the wall. 15 seconds left on the man advantage. And if this gets out of the zone, that might just do it. It hasn't been the two minutes that the Steelers were hoping for with the extra skater. And Lewis is stood up expecting to come out of the box any time now. And he will do, an important kill, but straight across to Robert Dowd. Might not be over yet for the Steelers, it's not. Bounds made the save, it was off his chest, but he covered quickly. Four minutes, 25, Jonathan, we were here last night at this stage of the game. Sheffield come back last night, can he do it again? But uh, there's a bit of unhappiness here. Sheffield went a bit late on Bouncy with a stick and they're trying to rattle him. And you know what? They're, not, they're just trying to get him. They're trying to get him off his game, but he's pretty strong mentally, Bouncy. Paul Thompson and Jerry Anderson on the Steelers bench. They've been through this before last season. Came back against Cardiff from two down. They're halfway back, but they've only got 4.25 to go. That playoff title is so tantalisingly close for Andrew Lord and his team. Here's Martin. Trying to get a little pocket of space. Plays it out front. Oh, and it was jammed on goal Great by pass. Asselin. Tangled out front, no penalty called. The fans who were nearest thought they should have been. It's Asselin again. Long pass forward, doesn't find anyone in white and orange. It goes through to bounds. The Steelers turn and head for a change. Westerling. Got a skate away from Ulmer, goes back to Matheson. Matheson to the end boards, he's first to it. Fournier's right with him, and that's really good work from the Devils' D-man. Bentavolio, Haddad, spinning around, Francilla, trying to get a stick in. Haddad trying to resist. And he's doing a really good job of it. Great work from Joey Haddad. Look at this, it's a one-man exhibition of keep away. And then he dumps the puck behind the back of the net where he's got Morissette. We saw it from Joey Martin. Killing and this we're seeing game really Joey well right now. Farina, Martin. Devils looking for the goal that will seal it. Richardson. Back around the boards, Morissette. Armstrong goes to keep him company. Great spell of possession from the Devils. Just what they would have been wanting. Sheffield have to try and separate them, get the puck back and get in the other zone. And it's hard when Cardiff get lower. We, we talked about this yesterday as well. They're very good at it. They, 
They know how to keep control. They're strong, they're big. But there's a, there's two minutes, 14 seconds. Incredible play on that shift. Initially from Joey Haddad to keep it away and then Morissette and then Martin. Not giving the Steelers a sniff. There's such experience in this Cardiff side. But when it comes to getting across the line in the finals, in recent years with Andrew Lord behind the bench, they've lost more than they've won in the playoffs and the Challenge Cup. But is this going to be the day that they get that playoff title finally? We should keep your eye in Mr. Koff's here. He'll be coming out soon, I think. This was the point that the Steelers came back against Nottingham yesterday. There were two minutes to go. They worked it to John Armstrong and from center right. He brought it down the ice, he went across, and the Steelers forced a leveler. Mustakovs had gone for the extra skater. Played it across and got that leveler through Nelson. We're inside two minutes, a minute and 55. And we'll keep our eye on Mustakovs. Long pass out looking for Nelson. It's beyond him to Hotham. The Steelers close in on him. Bentavolio gets it as far as neutral ice. O'Connor forward. Wah, O'Connor again, slaps it around the boards. Mustakos goes, the extra skater comes out, and the Devils get onto the puck. And can Hotham play it out of the zone? Not quite. Oh, there's going to be a penalty yeah. here on the Devils. Oh, my word, a minute 25, and they're going to call the Devils. The Steelers are going to get a power play and a chance to save their playoff lives. Maybe a big timeout called here, I think. Settle everything down. You know, they're going to go six and four and you see the end of it there with Ben Savolio coming in on Armstrong. Yeah, he's calling a timeout. They have, you know, the big thing is here, Jonathan, they have to win the draw. They can't lose the draw. They've got to get two guys in front of that net and they've got to get pucks in there. Last chance for the coaches to chat with their teams. Ben Bounds and four penalty killers. They've got a minute and 25 to survive. They will have an open net. It'll probably be six on four, almost certainly. But they can, can they do it again? That's the question. The Steelers did it yesterday. Cardiff may have an empty net to shoot at. If they miss the empty net, they can't be called for icing while they're short-handed. Steelers power play is 0 for 2 today. They're over 23% in the Elite League competitions this season. So Mustakovs is in the net. I think they want to see if they win the draw first. Yeah. So five on four, and it is the Devils who win the draw. But Strachan is tied up in the corner. Mustakov still stays in his crease. Comes back to Fretter. Armstrong shoots straight into the block and away on the spin by Morissette. Minute to go. Mustakov has surely got to come off the ice when the Steelers get this one down. If they manage to get it down and in. He does go now. Armstrong can't get down the boards. Hotham. The empty net is there, and Hotham shoots towards it, and he misses it. Oh, Mustakovs went back, recognizing the situation. He went towards the bench and then realized that Armstrong wasn't going to get off. 40 seconds to go. The Devils fans are on their feet. They can sense it. It's so close, but it's not there yet. Neely. Net is empty. Can Cardiff get it out of the zone? Martin. Not initially, they might do now, they will do now. Morissette, the net's empty, it's over! It's the Cardiff Devils! The wait is over! They're gonna be playoff champions! Into the empty net! What a moment, what joy!
you know, experience is a huge thing, and the play on the balls when the puck comes round and he bumps it back, it's just there's calmness and he makes it put the pass to the side and puts it to the empty net. It's a great play with the bump back in the boards. You know what? I think they deserve it, Jonathan, today. Would you agree? They have been the best team all season and they were on top for large parts of this game, there's no doubt about it. And when the moment came, they took it. They took their power play chance. The Steelers haven't been able to take theirs. And the empty net goal for the captain, Jake Morissette, his 22nd of the season, means that in a few minutes' time, he's going to get his hands on that Predictabet playoff championship. The great comeback that the Steelers managed yesterday will not be repeated today. Mustakovs goes back in the net, and the Cardiff Devils are 15 seconds away from a party. Fretter. Can't get away. The puck is tied up in the corner. It's knocked away. Redemption for Cardiff. They can party like it's 1999. They're playoff champions again. They've got their own back on the Sheffield Steelers for last season's final. And this time, the celebrations are all Cardiff's. Disappointment for the Steelers, but this is a red day. Stay with us here for the presentations of the man of the match and, of course, the lifting of the playoff final trophy. For the first time since they beat Nottingham in 1999, it will be the Devils who raise the playoff trophy. The disappointment of defeats here at the Elite League Finals weekend in 2010, 11, 12 and 2017 wiped away in one glorious afternoon. The handshake's taking place while the Devils fans celebrate. These are scenes that the Cardiff Devils fans will remember for years and years and years to come. And there's a fair few hundred in the corner who will be able to say, I was there. I'm pretty sure they're going to have a good night. <laughs> They've been having a great weekend. Yep. They're always such great contributors to this final weekend. Sheffield Steelers fans have all stayed behind to applaud their team as well. Their efforts this afternoon, not enough to defeat the league champions. It'll be a treble for Cardiff, the league championship, the Earhart Conference, and the Predictor Bet playoffs too. Pete Spencer is down at rink level and he's got the victorious coach, Andrew Lord, with him. Well, Andrew, a first playoff title in the Elite League era. How does this feel? Ah, I think we just broke the last curse. So, uh, just, ah, it's, I'm a, it's, it's unbelievable. Uh, the season we had last year, it was just so strange to lose on the final day uh, and have to have that 
for basically the last year. Uh, and to get back here, we've been, we've won two Elite League titles now in a row. We've been in every final the last two years. I honestly don't think it gets any better than this. And uh, I'm just so thankful to have this group of guys, this organization. Uh, I just feel really, really fortunate right now. How sweet is it to do it against Sheffield as well, especially after what happened last season and that double overtime? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, you know, pretty amazing feat for them to claw back even yesterday uh, from two goals down twice to get in here. And, uh, you know, they're a heck of an organization. And uh, it's been fun going against them these last uh, four seasons here. But uh, what a night. This is what it's all about. What was the message going into that timeout just before, obviously, you came out? You're on the penalty kill. Yeah, it was tough uh, being down there and then you get the goalie out. But, um, I mean, those three guys, Potham, Marty, Moe, have been killing for us uh, since I got here. And you add Strax into the mix, unbelievable penalty kill. Fun to see Jake Morissette get that goal, our captain, our leader, our heart, heart and soul guy. And, uh, Couldn't be anyone else good at it, really. Um, amazing. What about at the end, the way you saw out the game when we talk about, you know, Joey Martin, her dad down at the bottom, just taking time off the off the clock, keeping it in Sheffield's end as well. Yeah, it was funny. We came out, and I thought um, going into the third, I thought we were where we needed to be mentally. I thought we sat back a little too much. So once we got out here, at the same time, Sheffield was really coming. They threw the ch kitchen sink at us. We've seen that over the years, and uh, I loved our bite back. We gave up the one, obviously, but after that, boys, man, right up didn't worry about anything from the past and they moved on and uh, what a last uh, probably seven or eight minutes. Andrew Lord, you're a playoff champion. Congratulations. Thanks very much. Five seasons Andrew Lord has been with the Cardiff Devils, his fourth as a head coach and he's delivered the playoff title that the organization so badly wanted. Presentations are not far away from taking place. We're going to get the Steelers Man of the Match award announced now, and it will be the Steelers Ben O'Connor. But there's no cause for celebration for the Steelers. Their season ends trophyless and in defeat here at the Motor Points Arena to the Cardiff Devils. Well, my word, they certainly made Cardiff work for it in that third period. Yeah, for sure. Two great teams, and it was a great final. And uh, we talked about it. There's a reason why Cardiff are champions, and they have something. They've got a core, and Andrew Lord just talked about it. He touched on it, how privileged he is to have that core. And, hey, any coach wants that in the dressing room because it helps you massively. And great teams are built around great people, and they have something there. That's why... They've won the back-to-back trophies. They've been in every final. It's a great Champions League. Like, results don't lie. It'll be a very quiet bus back up the M1 to Sheffield. Wonder how many of those players will be back in Orange next season. I'm fairly sure that the Cardiff Devils are going to want to keep almost all of this squad together. They have done. They've had a core for such a long time. Lord and Morissette, the captain now, two who've been there over the last few years. They've seen the highs of league titles won and Challenge Cups won and now playoffs won. They've seen the lows of playoffs, finals lost, Challenge Cups lost and leagues lost on the final weekend. But they are the model franchise in the Elite League right now. They're setting the standards. It's up to everybody else to raise the bar and catch up to them. Justin Farina is the man of the match for the Cardiff Devils. What an impact he has made. 29 goals, including one in the semi-final. And what a great night to get the man of the match award. The presentation of the medals and the trophy is just a few minutes away. A lot of fans have stayed behind to see the trophy lifted. About half of the Steelers fans have 
made the start of the journey home. Still waiting for the trophy, here it comes, which means the presentation of the medals and the predictor back playoff trophy is now imminent. We're going to try and get some more reaction for you from the Cardiff Devil side of things. Looks as though Pete Spencer is with captain Jake Morissette. Well, Jake, when you take that moment to score that empty net, talk me through that moment. Uh, it was just an exciting moment for the team to kind of sealed it off there. Had a, a long battle. The guys were pretty tired by the end there, but yeah, it felt really good. You've been here for five seasons. You've seen disappointment. The, obviously, the overtime, double overtime loss to Sheffield last year. How sweet is it to come back here and uh, obviously put that put that right for Cardiff? Yeah, it feels great, you know. I mean, the guys wanted to get retribution after that, but I mean, regardless of that happening, we want to get the win, right? You you come here to win on playoff weekend, and uh, it's just huge for the boys tonight. Just talk to me about the scenes around as as we stand here now. The Cardiff fans away to the corner as well. What's this atmosphere like to be a playoff champion? Uh, it's unbelievable. It feels so good. I'm so happy for all the guys, so happy for the fans. Look at them down there having so much fun. Oh, I love it. What has been so special about this dominant group? Obviously, you, you got to all the finals this year. You were beaten, obviously, in the in the Challenge Cup, but you win the league and you come away with a treble. Yeah, you know what? I've talked about as much as I can this year, how good of people we have in our dressing room. These guys are like unbelievable guys, great people to be around. We have such a close team, and I think that makes us what we are. How much are you looking forward now to getting your hands on that trophy? They're just dishing out the medals at the moment. I think we all can't wait. I'll let you go and receive it then and receive your medal. Jake Morissette, thank you very much for your playoff champ. Thanks for having me. The Cardiff Devils will be taking their place in the Champions Hockey League next season. And with this win today, it also means that the Belfast Giants are off into Europe as well as winners of the Continental Cup. They'll be invited to take part. Sorry, winners of the Challenge Cup, they'll be invited to take part in the Continental Cup. Sheffield Steelers got to the super final of that this season and fell at the final hurdle. And they've done so again today. But these are wonderful scenes for the Cardiff Devils. Won the Challenge Cup in 2015 in the Sheffield Arena. The first trophy of this new era in Cardiff. Two league titles and a few conference crowns as well. And now, that, until now, elusive playoff trophy. Let's throw it back down to rink level. And Pete Spencer with victorious netminder Ben Bounds. Ben, as we stand here now, a playoff champion, how does this feel for you? Talk me through the emotions. All right. I think any time you win something like this, is um, it's, you can't really describe how it feels, but obviously losing like we did last year and that double OT to come back here in Sheffield this year and uh, like make that right and uh, win it, it feels unreal. Obviously, that picture of you at the, at the end of last season doubled over, D the disappointment was there for all to see. How does this feel now to obviously put that right from a Cardiff point of view? Well, I think... Not, not necessarily in that sense, but just this group of guys this year, they've been unreal, and I think to win the league the way we did, yeah, okay, we, we didn't play well in the Cup final and threw that away, but um, I think this is what we deserve, and I think we've been the best team by far all year, and uh, it's nice to see the best team win at any year this year. A lot of the players talk about the locker room, the group of guys, and the organisation as a whole. You've been part of what's been built here at Cardiff, and, and just talk me through how it's been built up to this level, and you know the potential for Cardiff really to be a dynasty for years to come. Yeah, I mean, it starts on the owners down, and uh, the setup I think is the best in, in Britain by far. I don't care what anyone else says, you talk to guys in other teams, and they don't get anywhere near the stuff that we do. I looked after the way that we do. 
and the way that every, all the girlfriends and wives and kids are involved, it uh, makes it one big family. And uh, I think that's what you got to do these days. And Lauder always gets his recruitment right. Uh, he doesn't just bring great players, he brings in great guys. And you see right from the first year where we overachieved through a little bit in the second year, but we still maybe overachieved a little bit. And then last year and this year, each year just getting better and hopefully it'll keep going. It seems to be a consistent base as well. You, when you look at some of the guys that you brought back, guys that have been here for, for a few years now, the likes of Joey Martin and players like that, you've really kind of built on solid foundation. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. I mean, you look at Hoth, you look at Marty, they've been the uh, best team and best forward respectively for all four years. And uh, I think play of the year has been shared between Marty and Hoth over the last three years or something like that. And uh, they're like they're the heartbeat of our team. Joey, Dad, Mark Richardson, obviously. and. Uh, that core group of players who lost one is all these, uh, all these titles over those four years. And you're a playoff champion, congratulations. Thank you, cheers. Andrew Lord picks up his medal. And we're just moments away now from Jake Morissette lifting the playoff trophy. Partners and families of the Devils players Staff and management are down on the bench. They've come to be part of the celebrations. There's a couple of the Devils assistants and off-ice team still to receive their medals. And the Devils will surely be favourites to win the league next year. They are the standard bearers across the Elite League right now. It's a family occasion for the Cardiff Devils. Ben Bounds referred to in his interview with Pete just moments ago. It's a great organization, the Cardiff Devils. That man, Todd Kelman, who is part of the Belfast Giants setup, inflicted one of these playoff final defeats on the Devils back in 2010. The difference he has made since joining this franchise. Still quite a few more medals left sat on that table. Taz is going to get one hung on his ear. Mascots have been a great part of the Brick to Bet playoff weekend. And he's quite right to celebrate. Waiting is almost over. After 19 years, the Cardiff Devils have made it back to the top on playoff finals weekend. Already league champions and conference champions, the Cardiff Devils once more are playoff champions. The champagne sprays 
and the celebratory drinks will go on long into the night and long into the off-season as well. And it couldn't be any more deserved. Morissette's empty net goal, the final exclamation point on another three-trophy season for the Cardiff Devils. So the players making their way into position, ready for the celebratory photograph. A couple of players just conducting interviews down on the ice with other media outlets. They haven't got Ben Bounds as part of this picture yet. They're going to have to wait a moment. Can't leave him out of this one. It's as though everyone is in there now. With all the fans behind them in the stands. What a great sight for everybody connected with the Cardiff Devils. Playoff champions for the fifth time. A photograph and memories that will last for a lifetime.